Move to approve the agenda as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right. <clears throat> and uh, this evening we got some appointments. Um, one thing I just wanted to read off this evening. Hello, Gene. So we got as far, uh, Gene, we just got as far as just um, bringing the meeting to order and we did the, um, the agenda. Um, unless you had anything that you wanted to add to the agenda, we've already approved it, but we can amend it if need be. But you're good? Okay. So before we get started, and, and just make sure if anybody hasn't, just make sure you sign in, uh, either on your way in or way out. <clears throat> um, so I just wanted to take a minute to go through you know, there's a lot of new faces that um, have been attending the meetings as well as um, there's been um, some different uh, uh, calls for, you know, questions and concerns in regards to kind of what the select board does or doesn't do. So I, I just wanted to <clears throat> catch everybody up and, and we do have, you know, Gene's a new person. So, you know, I just wanted to kind of go through a, a review of what it is really the select board does. Um, because uh, everybody has different opinions of what the select board does. And, you know, the select board, for the most part, the select board does three functions. So there's the legislative function, which the legislative function is, you know, enacting local ordinances, the regulations, and the policies. That's kind of the, you know, the non-flashy type, um, you know, um, lots of paperwork um, type end of things. Um, there's the administrative end of things, which is, um, preparing and presenting the budget, um, overseeing all the town expenditures, like we, you know, we sign, sign our expenditures that are down with Gene now, so all the payrolls, anything we buy. Um, Paul's our liaison um, that looks at all the expenditures on the board level ahead of time, and then we, we sign them, unless he objects to them. Um, and, and then obviously in our case, a lot of select boards, well select boards are different. In our case with the town managers, we oversee the town manager. And then the town manager oversees all the personnel and day-to-day -day operations. In a, if we didn't have a town manager, we had what we call a town administrator, uh, similar to like Royalton, then the town administrator really just runs the day-to-day -day operations, but not the personnel. So if we had that function, then the town of Bethel select board would be in charge of who we hire, who we fire, you know, those types of things. But in this case, we have a town manager, there's Therese. So Therese, you know, we're kind of Therese's boss and she takes care of everything day to day, including all the people in town, so. Um, and then the- that sound so She does <laughs> all the work, <laughs> we're just here. So when in doubt, it's- Trees. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do with the other half of your day? <laughs> Sleeping. Yeah. Um, and then there's the quasi-judicial pieces of it, which is, um, you know, determining um, private rights and such matters as like uh, laying out or discontinuing maybe a, a town highway or reclassifying a road. Um, hearing appeals. So we, we are the board of other things other than just select board. We're also the board of health of the community. Um, we are the local liquor control, as you'll see, like tonight we have a liquor license. Um, and then in Bethel's case, we're also the water and sewer commissioner. So, so you know, we kind of have multiple hats. Um, so if you had, you know, an issue with something that applies with health or, or if you have a business with liquor, or, um, or if you had um, water, sewer, uh, type grievances, then, then that's us. So that's basically the functions of the board. Other than that, you know, you know, for the most part, anything, any private matter that happens in the town is not, not the board's um, piece, unless we have some sort of common interest in it, maybe we share a property or something like that. Other than that, the, the town doesn't have any private authorizations as well as the town manager. So the board doesn't have it, Therese doesn't have it, and so on. Because there's, there's been some you know questions that we've had this week in regards to, um, you know, there's a hot topic in town about um, that flag that's put up uh, on the south end of town and 
And, and, and it's not the first time we have other complaints that come up all the time. So, you know, it might be, I don't like my neighbor, you know. Um, you know. But those aren't the kind of buckles um, type of um, areas where we have any authority. So. so yeah, there's some do you have questions, uh, have questions like from people when they have animal questions and stuff like that? We do have an animal that show also <coughs> does dogs. But like, was that, we had one earlier the week, last in the week, and it was about somebody has chickens but they're free range, so then they're going on somebody else's lawn, so people, they weren't happy, so they called us in the state. We don't, because Vermont, we're what they call a Dillon's rule state, we only have the authority granted to us by the state of Vermont. So in those cases, it was a civil matter, and a lot of times that's what it boils down to. It's a civil matter, so it's between neighbors. But yes, if you had a dog complaint about a dog, then we do have a dog ordinance about that, and there are rules about that, and people registering their dogs, right. et cetera. But, if it was because somebody's chickens are on your lawn, we're yeah. not going to be able to help well, you. I've, I've had sheep on my lawn. Oh, I'm sure you have. I know. It's funny. There, there actually is a statute about cattle and livestock, but it doesn't really have to address cattle. <laughs> so we just wanted to just kind of get that out there. You know, there's, there's some new people to the process that have been you know, taking a, a good interest in the board level, which is nice because we don't always have an audience. It's usually nobody. Um, so it's good to have those faces. It's also, you know, people come and go, new board members come and go. So it's good to kind of everybody understand what we do um, in a manner. So, and then also with Therese, you know, she has to answer phone calls nonstop about a chicken or a flag or your neighbor's house color or something else. Then that takes away from her day of, you know, getting getting the, the things done that, that we hire her to do. So, so that being said, we have our first appointment. We can throw tomatoes now or not. Um, but <laughs> Tim, Tim's here. So this time of year, um, you know, May June is the time of year where we set our water and sewer uh, rates and, and our budget. Um, so this is kind of typical year we're doing that. And you know, as anybody that's followed the town here over the last year, year and a half, you know, we are in the process of you know started in finishing our Main Street water line project. Um, so some of that will be reflective of, of this budget as we start taking care of some of that, that debt that, uh, to fund the project uh, that we had anticipated. So Tim? And this is one of those times that you meet as the water sewer commissioner. Yes. So this is where you we change our hats or water exactly. sewer commissioner mm -hmm. currently. But exactly. I so can run for the numbers or Therese can run for the numbers and I can do the technical yeah, I mean, what do you want? Do you want to just, if you guys have questions about the budget, we can answer that. Obviously, I gave you an overview mm -hmm. sheet, which is the 2021 slash 2022 water rate schedule. So we are um, we are coming to you with a 2.4 percent increase over last year in the water rate, and a 1.99 percent increase over last year mm -hmm. in the sewer rate, and. Um, you can see certainly last year, I think in the sewer, we had like 0.25% increase and we had a low increase in water too. Um, but as you can see in the water budget, we picked up the projected, um, currently projected $16,673 loan payment, which you really can't complain about considering that's on a $2.8 million water project. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. that's certainly really good news. Um, now I know when we started the water project, we had anticipated it. So. Well, we weren't sure. When we put out the flyer originally, we based it on not getting all of the funding because right. when you go to bond, you have to bond for the full $2.8 mm -hmm. We got 25% or right off the top and then another 50%. We have 50% off the top. For 50% off the top, then the so 25%. We have household income, we were below the threshold, and then we got 25% for the library and the person. And then, yeah. And because we get 100% of that, so anything that's galvanized, we get 100% of up, in and out. So if they're taking it out, we get 100% of the entire transaction. So, um, so when we ran the numbers at the end of the year, last year, obviously we're doing well. We're, we'll spend the whole 2.8 million, but we also got, on top of that, a 0% loan for 40 years. So 0% interest for 40 years. So that's how we, 2.8 million at a $17,000 bond payment. It's pretty good. 
But I know when we started the process, you know, kicking around just numbers about, you know, it was 2.8 or 2.8 that was going to turn into 1.2. Yeah, I think we were looking. 1.2 is kind of what we were yep. thinking yep. the budget would be. That's now less than that. Yep. And we've a, and we've even been able to upgrade some of our stormwater systems. Yes. Yep. As and we've been going. Yep. Well. And two, we updated two streets, side streets that hadn't been done. We've changed a bunch of kept spaces on Main Street. We Blacktop, two side streets. Full um, width. Full width, and we're still not done. Um, that's part of what I've been doing in the field is negotiating with them. Yeah. And getting our best bang for the buck while they've got the barrier opened up. Yeah. One of the things, too, that we should say is, you know, we put 15 grand aside last year for engineering of some stormwater, mm -hmm. and Tim and the super on the line, they were able to just basically, they just engineered on the fly. Mm -hmm and got it done. So we used that money instead of engineering, it went in the ground. Right. So it was kind of the perfect opportunity to take advantage of that. Um, so yeah, and then uh, Tim and um, Rick, they've been working, you know, to get the, um, keep up on all the lead abatement, which is everything that's galvanized, we get all of. So that has done really well. And we knew we had a lot of galvanized in the ground, but once it was open, we saw just how much. So we've, you know, the project has been moving forward and they'll be back around sometime this month. Sorry, you know, they'll be behind the scenes mm -hmm. doing some things before you actually see them in the street. And, and I will say that, I mean, on a typical year in this town, I mean, we did have the water break that happened out, you know, just off of this project limits that got done this past year. But typically, I mean, if you came through here on any normal year, there would have been a half a dozen or so <laughs> places where we went in through the winter to fix because of something. Mm -hmm. yeah. And at the same time, we've lost a lot of efficiency in water and mm -hmm. other things that come along with that, or potential contamination, mm -hmm. water flow, and those is that, you know, really, we, I mean, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, Tim, but we haven't had a lot of those call outs, you know. No, we um, haven't. We haven't. And uh, we did have the reduction in production, but we are. We've got some leaks that are starting to show up. We just haven't found them yet. Um, so, back on the hunt. so do we do the is, is the leak protection uh, the leak detection is that a yearly event that we do or is that only when we get grant? It, it depends on if the state offers it. This year they did offer it, but we have enough going on, and and we're already uh, proposing to do four more streets. Mm -hmm. So by the time we get done those streets, it didn't seem fair to apply for it and take it away from us. Because we've done it the other years. We didn't do it last year because of COVID, but before that, it was actually very helpful. Yeah, we did and it is a, yeah. yeah, it's a pilot program that the state pays for, but Tim's right. I mean, we're full steam ahead now, and, and we're already in, you know, full engineering mode on the next level because if the president releases money um, on, under President Obama's called the air money, but so and there's a lot of times they offer like a 50% forgiveness out of the gate, but you have to have shovel ready projects. So we're already going full tilt to design for the next one because we don't want to miss a nickel um, if we can get it. So that's where we're headed. Um, you know, the other that. thing that didn't make sense either was the, the outlying stretches that we haven't touched our AC pipe and we can't really trace them. Mm -hmm. So it was just going to be a, a fruitless effort. Well, I know I was, you know, back to the water rate and the things. I know when I had taken, I was looking at my notes from last year and when we were talking about this, and Paul probably uh, took really good notes in this piece of it, but I know we were talking like somewhere between eight and 12 cents increase, or, uh, sorry. 12 dollars a quarter. Eight to, eight to 12 dollars a quarter increase yeah. on this project. Yeah. So, you know, right now the proposal is three dollars, so I mean, you know, we're already starting to see some of the efficiencies and, and some of the... A lot of that, Chris, was we was able to identify galvanized even further than we thought. Mm -hmm. And it's a reimbursement rate of 100%, so if you find 100 feet, you get 100 feet of new line. Right. Mm -hmm. So the payback was astronomical. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. The other thing, too, we put in this wa in the water budget, too, which we hadn't taken into consideration before, is we split the utility truck between the road crew and us. Mm -hmm. So we needed to put some money in the budget to take care of our end, you know, tires, different things. So that's in here, which wasn't before. Um, and I had wrote in my notes look, that we didn't have an increase in sewer last year. It was 0.24%. Oh, was it? Yeah. For oh, so whatever reason, I thought it stayed the same. Yeah, it was like ridiculous. It must have been the year before that. So maybe. Mm -hmm. I think we've, yeah, yeah, we did freeze one year. Okay. 
So for the, you know, for the water budget, that's where we, you know, look at the other thing too is, you know, Tim and I, <laughs> we go through this every year when we're calculating rates. Mm -hmm. It's really important for us because we have to figure out how many people EUs we have in the system. Plus we have to figure mm -hmm. out how many we have for, um, that are vacancies. So if the select board, if someone comes and asks the select board for a vacancy rate, right. it's nice that you guys are only getting it for six months because mm -hmm. the vacancy rate pays the fixed cost, but it doesn't pay the full, end, you know, the full boat of the budget. So when those get made during the year, Tim and I are like, all right, you know, we have to compensate for that somewhere in the rate structure. So we go through this every year. We, we send out a survey to people that you might not be aware of. If it's a residential homeowner, we don't. But if it's mm -hmm. a school or a business, we, we have a grease trap. When was the last time it was empty? When, how many EUs, you know, how many employees do you have? How many, what's the business type? And, and we go from there to make sure that every year these are accurate. So if something gets changed in the middle of the year, you know, it's, it's uh, we try to accommodate. <coughs> So something with how we do that too sometimes is the reserve funds because obviously if you don't make any money we're not funding the reserve fund but mm -hmm. so that's how we take that into consideration with those sewer and water. But I don't know if you have any specific questions about the budget. Um, yeah, I had a just a quick <coughs> excuse me a quick this is a, this is annoying. Yeah, it is. It's hard. Uh, quick question on the sewer uh, department one the one line item system maintenance. Uh, for 20,000 and then 1920 we only used 5688 and <clears throat> so far this year only 5700 is that um, a typical number oh can that is that can that number be lowered 20,000 I don't know what you know Tim would have to answer I'm not sure number is it? system maintenance it is, uh, system maintenance 20-7 uh, yeah, 2501 mm -hmm. In the sewer, you mm -hmm. can see in one year where it went over from 85 yeah. to 18, and then 25 to 5. Yeah. Um, but and then 20 to 5. The only thing I can think of that could have happened in there is if the um, and I didn't look at that, but if the if there was had been some maintenance that was done that was bigger that maybe the auditors wanted to put into um, they wanted to capitalize it, they might have you know made a reduction. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm not sure you know where you're at this year, Tim. What do you normally? Well, on the system maintenance, yeah. it depends on what's breaking and what oh, happened. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and uh, one pump's 12 grand to replace or do a rebuild on. Mm -hmm. So, and I've already had one act up this year, and the one beside it's acting up again. Mm -hmm. So, when I have things like that, sometimes they're not every year, they'll skip right. a year. Oh, yeah. so, <coughs> it's, uh, and so what happens is that money... What happens with that money if it doesn't get used? It stays yeah. in their undesignated fund balance, which is okay. a good thing because if, like, for this year, I have a, a webinar <coughs> this month coming up about the money that's come headed toward the towns, how to spend it. We obviously want to put it into sewer water infrastructure, but it's going to depend if they don't open it up. So mm. if they don't open up the caveat surrounding that, to, we may have to buy a pump this year and then say, okay, we're going to buy one pump this year and one pump next year mm -hmm. out of that number. Okay. Um, but the good news is it stays, it goes into their undesignated fund balance. So if they owe any money to the town, you know, we can pick it up there or, um, you know, by paying off the do to do prompts or it sits, you know, if it's profit, it sits in this undesignated fund balance. So if we get a big hit for something, mm -hmm. hopefully it doesn't cripple you so you don't have to pass oh, the yeah. total thing along in the future. Yeah. But since we don't know about that yet, um, that's one of the things that we talked about was pumps because we mm -hmm. could easily spend 70,000 on pumps for the sewer plant. So we were talking about that. If the money doesn't come in, is there a way we can take some out of this budget and then some out of the next, start easing that burden to try to keep the sewer rates like this. Yeah. To give you an idea of the two pumps at the plant, when I rebuild them, they're anywhere from five to 8,000 a piece and it's every two years. They're not cost efficient no. at all. Mm -hmm. They've done their time. We've, we've got the 34 years out of them. And the pieces that stay in that are non-changeable are wearing out. The, the parts that you bolt to are not mm. bolting up so well. Mm. OK. Well, as long as it, it goes into that fund. So yeah. if you do have a major crash. There's a safety. Uh, right. There's a safety. Um, yeah. 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 OK, thank you. Well, the, uh, just for my information, what does vacancy rate mean? So the vacancy rate is 
something that Bethel does that says, say um, you own an apartment building and one of, um, or, or uh, let's I'll use a different example actually because yeah. we change that one. Let's say you go to Florida in the winter. We do have a couple of snowbirds who go to Florida in the winter. And if this, the ordinance was amended so that if you go to Florida in the winter and we shut your water off for the winter, we put you on a vacancy rate. So that rate covers just the fixed cost portion of the budget. So um, it used to be years ago that like if you had a vacant apartment, you know, you got a vacancy rate for that apartment, but if your other apartment was full. And so now what you do is if the, say you have someone, and you do have someone in town who's working on a building, and say they came to you and said, you know, look, we bought this building and we want to redo it. A lot of times the select board will say, okay, look, we'll give you the vacancy rate for a month, two months, six months, or whatever, to give them a chance to help, you know, bring those online. But what the vacancy rate is, it just covers uh, the fixed the cost. Fixed cost. Budget. So it's the it's the infrastructure cost versus right. the amount of product that we're delivering. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's basically it's everything from the treatment plant right to your curb stop. It would be like the telephone yep. wires. Uh -huh. Yep. Cost versus the yep. Making individual calls. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Which which we found normally, yeah. and it varies from year to year depending on how many you know if, if we lose a couple or gain a couple of services, but it's you know somewhere in the seventy five to eighty percent of the cost is fixed, and then the other 25, 20 to twenty five percent is the variable cost. So how much water are we using? Uh, you know, as a consumer using that we need pay for it so so usually if you decide to go on vacancy rate it might save you thirty dollars a quarter well that's you know kind of what I thought yeah. I just wanted to <laughs> yeah okay so the other thing on this sheet is annually uh, Tim has to do a consumer confidence report so that the link goes out to people here um, so that's something that if you haven't seen before is on the website and, and it just tells you all about water quality testing and Cetera. We also did a little water project construction update on this same sheet along with future plans, which was the same on the mailer that we did as well. So mm -hmm. just to kind of let everybody know what's, you know, what's going on. So, um, and when are we anticipating Tim uh, Taker to start back up with their probably June first in that area? They've got a, one crew there that's on one job up there now that they're that's the one that's coming here and they're waiting to wrap that part up. And we had talked it's what, two months worth of work we got left? Yeah, it's gonna be roughly two months, but it depends on the size of our punch list too. Okay. Do you know exactly where they're gonna be starting? I know Densmore was part of it, but like how how much into Main Street and the curve did we actually get to last year? Uh, this is all done except okay. we've got to go back in and somebody's gotta repair some of the valve boxes and such. But basically all the way to Janice's house got... It's, it's completed. So it won't really... Because the, the reason I'm asking is I've had a few people at the school ask, will it affect bus traffic in the morning? Shouldn't really. The only thing that would back you up is if the line on North Main Street reached down into Main Street for traffic package. We've got to change all the way to the post office. Mm -hmm. We've still got to do all the way up around here, and then we've got to go to Bethel Hill. And we still, the sampling station has to go on Pleasant sampling Street. Sampling station's but, on Pleasant Street. But that may be, we don't know if it'll be after school mm -hmm. starts. But there will be some on Main Street, as you said. There's some you valley boxes. There's structure some by Mascoma and you have to put yeah. the hill there's here. There's some yeah. stuff that got broken yeah. near the end of the year that needs to be repaired. So there will be some delays on yeah. Main, you know, at time to time, but nothing. Where's you know, the sampling day. station going to be? It, you have to, by state law, you have to tie in before your first connection after your contact chamber with Jen in front of the very apartment building yep. in front of the school like this. Yep, yep. And I didn't want to bother, bother any residents, so we're going to put it at uh, 224 in the parking lot. Right, and we're going to put a new fire hydrant in at the same time, so we'll yep. none of us have to think about that yep. moving forward. We're also going to try and not dig up the road. We're going to try to fish the line down the old water main. Mm. So if it Ooh. works, we're only going to have two holes So with any hope by August, hopefully by August, the project will be, you know, yeah. basically yep. completed. Mm -hmm. So that's good. We'll be wrapping it up. Yeah, so that's good. Any 
further discussion in regards to the rates? Oh, and just so you know, this is effective on sorry, July 1st, so the rates go. And um, G Tree just printed water bills today. So what will go out with the water bills is a notice will go out with the water bills that says, actually the notice will look exactly like this. <laughs> it goes out and you get one every year. Um, it kind of takes care of our requirement for the CCR as well as letting people know what the rate increase will be effective July 1st. Okay. So we will need a motion um, to approve the budget. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes. So the last thing is, so to bear with me, Lisa is retired, so I'm taking minutes now, so <laughs> good job on that. <laughs> so, um, Alder Janelia, there's an amendment in here, uh, number three, uh, that we'll need a motion for me to sign. Um, that's obviously the project was, you know, just extended. We ran into a bunch of stuff in the street last year that was all unanticipated. Uh, this helps, this keeps, you know, someone on the street for construction, for doing the construction documents and all that sort of stuff. So um, it is an addition of 20, oh, no, I just 22.9. 22.9, thank you. And um, we already got permission from Cindy Parks at the Drinking Water state revolving loan fund, so this is already wrapped up into our into our loan. Okay. So a motion to approve the amendment for for the engineering costs for Aldrich and Elliot. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 We also put in there just as a little heads up for you, community revitalization requires water infrastructure investment. So this is a little bit of information that came out from the office of the governor. Um, obviously Bethel is slated to receive 192963 It does not include money earmarked for the county distribution that will come to us. Um, so we're, we're kind of waiting to see what that's going to do. Half will come in June 2021, half in June next year. Um, so we're kind of waiting. Like I said, there's a, um, I have written to the local representatives to say, you know, open the money up a little bit more. We don't necessarily need to build new, we need to be able to re revitalize what we have yeah. for infrastructure. Yeah. So we're waiting to see. There's still some strings attached to that money. Uh, so we're waiting on that, obviously. So you that, know, that, that would be something that we'd be able to use towards like Sand Hill or something like that? Or well, or no? right now the, the caveats are it can only be used for four things. Sewer, water, broadband, um, local business, something with local businesses, um, essential workers, but everybody's kept their jobs, so I, it's really not an issue there. Um, so right now, our, our my feeling, personal feeling, is economic development comes because of infrastructure in the ground. So the money that we receive, uh, you know, in my opinion is it should all go in the ground. I was disappointed that it wasn't coming in to go for roads, bridges, culverts. I think that money will come and it will be funneled through VTRANS. But the money that's coming directly to us, there's, those are the caveats of the money. You can only use it for these things. But like I said, there's a training or a, a webinar on, I think it's 18th or 19th that I'm gonna go to, to see, you know, exactly what's coming, but for us, we would love to see it. We've already started on another, you know, the engineering on another water project. So Sand Hill, Crystal, you know, all that stuff that we list in here. So obviously for us, it would be great if we could tuck all that money into that project because it would help us keep rates even. And the thing too, you have to remember in the sewer ordinance is any debt we take on the sewer goes on the tax rate. That's what that ordinance says. So it would be nice if we can take this money and put it in the ground for infrastructure because we want business to come here, but in order to some of these businesses to do that, they need upgraded infrastructure to do that. So um, I will have more information on that later, but I thought that this was really interesting coming from the governor. They're basically saying the same thing. You know, they want infrastructure upgrades. So I just thought it was good information and I put my, our information 
um, on the last page in bold. So we'll see. We'll have more probably information on the 24th about what that money looks like and what the caveats are to it, more specifically than what we know now. So that's what we have for water sewer. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Yep. Well, thank you, Tim. Personally, I haven't heard any complaints. I do have, well, Teresa and I have looked at a section and I, I think it's a combination of quad runners and snowmobile club, because I think you access that area the same. But we have a stretch of road, so you, at the top of Bethel Mountain, we have, uh, what is it? Hooper Hollow. Hooper Hollow Road. Mm -hmm. That, you know, dives off to the left, comes down, and as it's coming into the bowl there, there's a trail that comes down on the left uh, that right now the, the, the water doesn't properly drain coming off. It, it, comes, it literally comes down the trail and then it dumps out right across the road. So obviously in the uh, early spring or, or sorry, late spring, early spring or late fall areas, it, it potential of water runoff and then glazes the road there. Um, so I think we were, Teresa and I were looking at it when we were up there uh, the last fall. I think so. And no. wondering if, you know, somehow we could either partner with the landowner to... We talked to Alex, too, right? To, to maybe get the, the water to flow off of that trail and either put in some water bars or something that we can get it so the water is just not coming down that trail and dumping right out onto the road. Because where, where it dumps out is a probably a... It's a very unsafe stretch of road to begin with. When you first go down in, yeah. you, I think it's Jack Cowdery owns some property right there. Do you know where his access is? Yeah, as soon as you come down to Hall, right there on the left, that's Jack's. So when you walk up it, you can see the way the water's come up. So even if there were some water bars on, you know, Jack's end to keep it because it's coming off and then. It's not really, it's coming off the road, it's coming off right to the left of it, down that bank. Yeah, and then yeah, mm. all that sediment stuff comes out in there so it becomes, you know, water and or gravel. So we've talked to Alex Reister. Maybe yeah. some water bars. Because the challenge there is it's very ledgy there, so it's not like you're going to go in and yeah. put a ditch in and get that ditch to flow into the, yeah. you know, the town ditch. So I think the only way to do it we talked about was maybe put one or two water bars. Further up just to get it. That yeah. could collect it and yeah. shoot it off. Yeah. 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 Because the way it is right now is the water comes right down that trail and it, then it spills out right across Super Hollow Road. Yeah. yeah. And it, if you get a whatever cold night or morning or whatever, it'll glaze that right over. Yeah. And it kind of, yeah, it comes off. It's a very steep, Yeah. you know, you come down yeah. into that. Yeah, if you guys walk up in there and take a peek, you'll see exactly yeah. what we're talking about. I had a guy contact me about a month ago, and he was looking to buy a piece of property, and that was the property he was talking about, because he asked if the ATV trail went through it. Uh -huh. And I said, uh, yeah, it does. And uh, he goes, good, but he says, that's what I want. He says, I want to buy property with an ATV trail on it. And he says, I like to have an ATV. Uh -huh. So I will look and see if I can find his yeah. To see if he bought it, or you can call Pam at the town clerk's office to see if he purchased. We've had a lot, as you can imagine, with the property kind of flying off the shelf, for lack of a better analogy. It's been crazy. We've had a lot of inquiries. So whether or not it actually changed hands, I don't know. But if you just called or emailed Pam, she would be able to tell you. And she'd certainly have a name attached to it. Yeah, he, I think he contacted me. Somehow he got my... Uh, Email, personal email, and email. I'll, I'll look and see if I can find it. Yeah, so, and I'm not sure if he bought or not, but we did have up in that area because we also had somebody. No, it was 
else. Charlie Wilson wrote. I, I mean, we got some guy got his own permit out there. Jonathan did. So, but we did have. I answered a few questions about a property out there. So whether or not he ever, you know, he bought, I don't know for sure. But well, that's good. I'm glad he was interested. But so we also talked to Alex about. It. I don't know if you two ever meet for talk or whatever. But they were also. He said that you know his home good club could also take do something about it. But I don't know who's going to get to it first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think you both use it. Obviously, mm -hmm. they use it in the winter time, which yeah. now I'm gonna put water bars in in the winter. But mm -hmm. it, it, it looks like probably the only thing. It, it, it's only it's only storm water runoff. There's no spring or anything that's coming yeah. down off the road. It's no. it's clearly a storm water yeah, we surge. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but if somehow we you know I if somehow we could get like you know some water bars or something that we can pitch it, you know either back towards the ditch or off. Off the side of the or something, but it's all ledge right there too, yeah. so I don't know what we, yeah. what it can do. But but we haven't. I personally have had zero complaints yeah. about you. But I do have a question, however. I was looking for this map, and I looked on your website, the A, not, or whatever the your the website, Vasa, Vasa. the Vasa website, yeah. and it says on there that they don't give out. Like they, you obviously don't publish Vasa maps. Is that because you, just so I know, is that so that because you want people to pay the fee to register their their um, ATVs and then they get access? Is that how it works? Yeah. Okay. All right. I just figured if someone asked, I wanted to have yeah, it. And to be honest with you, you won't find that map. If you were to get a map from Vasa, uh -huh. you would not find that on the trail system. On the trail system. <laughs> no. No, because it's not 100% legal. We have like three land numbers. Oh. That we've got to get in contact with. Okay. See, so, uh, from the Cook Shack over to Doug Lovins, mm -hmm. there's a section in there that's private. And uh, Mr. Webster and Randolph used to own it. Yeah. And, and he would never give anybody permission to use it, but he would never go after anybody. And he'd been oh. using that trail for over 40 years. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and so, but he just, for, he just when he built Mars, I guess, he just would not give permission. Yeah. But the Snow Machine Club met with him years ago and, and he said, I'm not going to give you permission. Uh, I'm not going to go after you. So they just kept using it. Yeah. You know, that technique. But because they had two people there, you know, on the conversation, they just signed a slip for it because mm -hmm. they had two people. Mm -hmm. you know? So we have some things like that. that sort of. Uh, sure. Gary Sarge, I mean, we used Gary's uh, Everett Lyons and I met with him years ago. We asked Gary, Gary, can we have permission to use you know, go across your land. He said, you can do anything on my land you want. He said, I have not signed an agreement. He said, I will not sign a piece of paper. Hmm. So we had two guys. That, I mean, he said, you can go in my field. You can do whatever you want. He said, I'm, I'm not signing that. So, I wonder why. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> he just was afraid of the liability. Right? I guess, right? Oh, and, then, yeah. and then because of that, you can't publish the map so because it's absolutely. maybe not a legal oh, process, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, okay. We talked about so we have a safe place for now because the one I thought I had was the Ramblers. I'm like, oh my god. Like, we got the frame it. Well, that's all I said. We're getting like copies this thing. I'm, I'm like 12 in the file so we can find it. Yeah, I don't have to make copies. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll make sure we. Did you have something call? Well, I know we talked about a logging issue there a few meetings ago. Um, and there was some damage to the road up in that area. There was concern about, and I didn't know if that was any part of the trail there. There was the you talking was, like the Quimby Forest that we were yeah, talking about? Yeah, that we were talking about up the top where that log landing was going to go. Oh, well, yeah. And people are driving up there. Mm -hmm. um, well, we've certainly, we, we have since um, Alan has met with A.J. Quimby, the county forester, we're talking about um, going up uh, Ringe to do, um, they were talking about logging out of there, logging Quimby out of there, putting a parking up area up there. But um, Alan and I had met, and then he went on it, and we had been, we just said, no way. Hmm. You, we know, we put a bunch of money into Ringe with the April 2019 flood. And I, I'm just like, look, I get it. My stepfather's a logger, and they're crazy. But, I mean, but mm -hmm. you, we won't even plow. We're not, you're not going to okay. seriously put a log truck up and down. They're just going to trash the road. So it looks like they're looking now at the woodland. Um, at the other right, curve. right. Just didn't know if it connected. Yeah, coming together. Right. Yeah, I didn't know if it connected at all with the with the I don't ATV know if you guys club. Go up range. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. yeah. So right now it's it doesn't look like we're going to do that. We talked to the county forester. They met with them and they walked it and just said we yeah. we put 
a bunch of money in here. We don't really want to do that. So maybe they're looking at the other access to the property, which he was a little bit concerned of originally because I think it can be kind of in a wet area. But we just said, look, we got to look at something else because he wanted to log it in the winter. I'm you like. Because we went all the way, well, we went as far as we could up to class three, and then yeah. we stopped. And yeah. uh, up above that, you know, there's just that house up there. Yeah, right? camp, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but it looks like we're not going to. So we, we use part of the woodland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we come in like that, so we can. Yeah. Yep. And then go up through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not set in stone yet. I can email you once I find out a little more. Because some of the, the other access, they were concerned about one park maybe being on private property, one being a little wet and trying to figure it out. But um, I think since then, AJ Almsby, the county forester, is going to meet with um, the Class 4 Road Committee and, and take a peek at that and see how else they could access the property. Um, because what they were trying to do was establish where they had the log landing at the top of Ringe would be to establish a parking area because they also want to do some of the um, Conservation Commission wants to put some hiking trails through Quimby. So they were thinking if we could do a little parking up there um, so that when people could drive range in the summer and fall, we can park and hike. So, but I'm not sure right now. Because, you know, I mean, there's a part of range that's straight yeah. down. So. If they're, like, if they're logging on the class four section um, above the class three there, if they're in there logging, and, you know, that road's pretty narrow. I mean, we can put up signs. We could even close the section of the trail for a period of time if we need to. We've done yeah. that in the past. But. Well, I'll make a note here to get a hold of you once we figure out. Um, once. We well, how, how late do you typically run the trails? May 15th to uh, October 31st. Because I think, I mean, they're talking about going up and logging that. Yeah, like, in winter. You know, it's winter. Yeah, in yeah. early winter, so mm -hmm. you guys probably won't even yeah. be. Yeah be active at that point, right? You're probably more, I don't know, some of you do they, yeah, I can don't let, have access to that? I think so, but what I can do is I can let Chuck and Ken and um, Alex right. Mr. Or know what the plan is going to be, so at least once Of course, we, we never get any snow until yeah. January, February, so. <laughs> it would be a trip, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we'll let you know how it affects said no to range and walked it, I think the, the county forester kind of went back with um, fair and director and conservation commission to like, yeah, mm -hmm, let's check out the other access. It's more doable, it's less treacherous, and um, so we'll see what they do. And they obviously want to bring in some, some gravel to the roads, et cetera, you know, things like that. So, but it was hard for us because we were like, we just put money into that. So I, we didn't want to no. damage anything. Any other questions for the quad runners or just need a motion to approve the annual use of the roads for the Central Vermont quad runners? As oh, noted on the map. Second. Okay. Call motion in the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Awesome. All set. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if you could just take a look at that piece there and just let us know if there's anything to do with that. Because okay, yeah. you guys typically work with the landowners more than yeah. we would. So. Yeah. Something simple, a water bar or something would be awesome. Okay. Thank you. And Chuck, I did respond to your email. It was kind of right before I came here about the Friday morning thing. Oh. But yeah, I'm happy to come and talk if you want to talk about, you know, jobs in municipal government. I was thinking, too, I maybe be able to you probably know Ryan Slack. I do. Maybe I could harass him. And I've already had the state come in. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. they've already been in and spoke to the class. Because I knew they had like a training program at one point. They do. Yeah. yeah. So which is nice. Yeah. But yeah, I'm certainly happy to come in and tell them all the great things about working for Yeah, like I say, <laughs> I don't know if I've got anybody. I've only got a handful of yeah. seniors. Okay. And a couple are going to college. and Sure. I think I got two that are going into the workforce. Yeah. So. Well, still, anytime if you want to do that this year or even next year, you want, you know, I'm happy yeah. to come in and give, give the kids my feel about municipal government.
Yeah. Yeah. So. Actually, next year would be good. I have a female in my class next year. Okay. It'd be great to have you come in then. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, just reach out to me, Chuck, anytime, and I'm happy okay. to make sure I call Awesome. It. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Oh, any greater operators will take those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember, uh, yeah. Hopefully you're doing that. Yeah. Oh, no, sure. unfortunately I don't. <laughs> you guys don't do any I do, I do, operations. Most of the stuff I do is maintenance and repair. Mm -hmm. um, I did just buy a low boy trailer so uh -huh. I can load equipment onto it, which I do have two pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. They're going to load the equipment on, they're going to chain it down, they're going to hook the low boy back together, and we're going to set up an obstacle course in the parking lot. That's what nice. we're we'll doing next Friday, nice. or this Friday. Do they do, so do you help them get their CDLs? I, I can't help them get their CDL, I can help them get their permit. Yeah, right, well, of course, right, get their permit, you can help us, yeah, so, that's what I yeah. yeah. I know, yeah, we're trying to partner with the state, um, Stu Johnson from VTrans, and he, he's going to come down and do some greater operator training in person. Yeah. Like he's getting a second vaccine here soon. So that's, yeah, it's certainly a need. I mean, as you know, we just, I mean, oh, yeah. I, I'm on their list, sir, and the jobs are, people, they're just looking for people. Yeah. Um, to I had two, two phone calls this weekend uh, looking for, no doubt. for help in the field. Yeah. 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 That greater course, I took that years ago to, because uh, I worked for, well, at the time I was working for Stockbridge, but mm -hmm. that, uh, it's, uh, you don't learn to run a grader in it. Yeah, this guy's actually going to come down and work with them on site. My thinking too is maybe is Chuck is too is um, and is to bring in get this guy to come from the state and um, see if I could sweet talk Sid Hodgkiss and maybe Gary Slot. Kind of get a couple people. They all have a different approach. It doesn't yeah. make it wrong. It's just different. Yeah. So that each person, so that the new guy Hayes and then we just hired Gabriel Feeney graduates from BTC soon is maybe we can get you know them to kind of get a feel yeah. for it and I think so sometimes it's each operator probably has a different style yeah. so that was kind of part of my you know plan was to think about bringing the school and stuff is helpful but they, they need ass in the seat well and that's what these guys are going to do is they're yeah. going to be in the seat and he's going to be there kind of working with them and you know and talking them through it so We'll see, but I also think, yeah, getting, you know, Gary, getting Sid, maybe come in and just kind of give them some pointers, put them out on the road and yeah. say, okay, yeah. this is what you got to do. That's what I'm expecting from Stu, hopefully. So, and yeah. some of it, just like you said, is do we have a guy out now, Hazen, and um, it's, it's do, you know, just start doing it. And, and he's yeah. out, kind of working with him from the side, saying this, is, this looks good. The first time he did a road, it was a little too light, but you know what? Yeah. He did it. And yeah. he got the feel for it, and so yeah. I think it's just time. Yeah, at that point it is. It's yeah, so, yeah. but it's <coughs> certainly trying to figure it out. Yeah. So. But I appreciate it. So, yeah, just let me know, Chuck. Reach out to me next year. Happy okay, to do it. awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Good you. night. Good night. <clears throat> All right. And our last appointment of the night, we have our Equity and Inclusion Committee. So we're just uh, continuing our discussion that, that we've been having here over the last couple of, well, not the last meeting, but <coughs> two meetings ago, because we had some back-to-back -back meetings there. Because of somebody's birthday, friends. It's all my fault. <laughs> You're birthday. welcome. Uh, somebody's in the way. Somebody's right. vacation. Somebody's vacation. Yeah, birthday, birthday. vacation. Jeez. So. All right. Do you want... Uh, Anybody from the committee want to start the discussion, or or anybody from the board, or how would you like to do it? Um, <clears throat> hi, Owen. Mm -hmm. I'm from the Community Inclusion Committee. Um, I think where we left off last is um, we wanted to facilitate a couple of conversations between the committee and various select board members. So we suggested the idea of pairing members. suggesting that 
So I, I know I mean, I mean, we're all our own voices here, just one fifth of the voice. Uh, so you know, I really appreciated the the um, the information that was passed out, and you know, and I, I think you know these you know particular pieces of discussion are you know like you had put it before. Oh, and you know they you know they. The, uh, you know, they mean something a little bit different to each person, right? In their their own journey, um, so to speak. So, you know, how I may interpret it might be a little different than than Lindley or or anybody else. And I I think it was kind of nice that Paul and I kind of got together on a Sunday. I think it was it was and, and went through it. And uh, actually, I had discussions with Lindley and 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 Dave as well, just from popping in. And, you know, so I, I think it's, you know, uh, you know, I definitely welcome the, um, the documents and, you know, I kind of, I mean, kind of like the, at this point, see it grow, like, um, like, you know, where do we take it next? Like, can we get it into, like, a, a community setting? You know, how do we, you know, because I, my whole thing is, like, how, how do we apply this, right? Because um, I think, you know, we have, like really good backing on the board, you know, um, on moving forward, being positive, uh, getting things done, you know, constructively. So, like, how, how do we now like start applying this more community-wise? Um, you know, what's the proper setting for this? Like, you know, can we? I don't know. I just don't know. Can we have potluck? You know, get together where maybe you know certain pieces of literature that you know people want to come and be a part of and. And, and then at the same time, the committee can collect some data of, you know, here are some of the uh, discussions or topics that um, that are part of their life, you know, so that the committee can develop some sort of baseline like we had talked about with our community to see how, how can we best use this information to serve our community. And, uh, and, I, and I think, um, Jesse and Owen, I, at the beginning I had, and this has nothing to do with your guys' committee, but I, because we have a lot of new people that frequent the board meetings now, as well as, you know, Gene's new um, committee member, and, you know, I was just kind of listing off kind of what is, what does the select board do, you know, so people know, like, you know, we don't police uh, people's thoughts and feelings and um, flags or, you know, uh, disputes with our neighbor, but, you know, we do have control over you know, I went through, you know, the legislative part, which is, you know, ordinances and regulations and policies. Um, you know, we talked about administrative, which is preparing budgets. So, you know, if we see something that is, you know, the group that is constructive, like, hey, you know, we'd like to, I don't know, make something up. Uh, you know, we'd really like to expand uh, Ford Festival and, and maybe have a, an event, like, here that, you know what, and it's gonna, you know, cost us four hundred dollars. You know, then those are things that we can talk about budgeting to help out the committee on, you know, how can we best, uh, you know, spend money to create a gathering. Um, you know, those types of things. Like, you know, because the board really, we're, we we need something concrete to be able to do something with. So, so I through this whole thing, I've been trying to process this and thinking, okay, like, how do we move this into something concrete? that then the five of us members can then take and start working on, like, that we have control over. Um, so that's kind of the way I've kind of been approaching this. Um, I, I think that's true. And, and, and I'm just kind of in the dark because, you know, what I think maybe the town needs is probably different than what Lindley or, or, or anybody in this town, you know. I, unfortunately, I'd love to talk to all 2,000 members of the community, but, you know, it's, it's a lot of people and don't always get to see everybody, so. Yeah, one of the conversations that Chris and I had after, you know, because obviously Lindley and I met and we talked about there, and then Chris and I were talking too, was, so, and it was, you know, it was good, it was an interesting article, and, and um, I'm halfway through the book that you recommended, and, um, but for, for me, certainly, it was how do we put it into practice, you know, I think that I'm a fixer, that's what I do, that's my, you know, I'm a fixer, so for me, I, I going back to that survey and redoing the phone, you know, book, I, and I'm not sure if you did the phone book, that's a big undertaking, but certainly the survey is, when we have the budget, 
for example, and we have social appropriations, right? Like, for example, we give money to, uh, the Red Cross gets a little money, and um, maybe the Food Shelf or the um, Central Vermont Agency on Aging or something like that. So, but what are we missing? So with a survey, if you guys were to talk to people, and, 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 which is an undertaking, right, to get the survey, to get the answers, I can't fix something that I don't know, right? So if you did this survey and you could find out maybe it's, um, what is the need that comes out of it? Maybe it's something we're not, we're unexpected. One of Chris's things was what if it's maybe for um, I mean, it was like refugees or people coming to the community. Rutland does a great job welcoming people. Maybe, maybe we should be doing that better. So maybe some money needs to be appropriated to that. Maybe it's something unexpected. What if it's um, small children that aren't being taught to read or math, so we need to, we need to go, because of the results of your survey, we can go find an agency and I, we can say, hey, we need to partner with you. We want to give you an appropriation. You need to, we want you to provide services in our community. So I think the article is good and I think it's interesting too to have because things that go in the packet, we hope, we hope everybody reads our packets, right? And um, I do. So that information gets disseminated and if you're doing community potlucks and outreach, and so if you've got a grant from Babes to do an outreach, a community outreach, that's great. So what I don't know and, and where, you know, is what are the questions that need to be asked to find out where the need is that we're missing? How do we ta simultaneously, in my brain, tackle getting people information that, as you've stated, it, it is a very personal journey for them to read in the privacy of their own, with people they're comfortable with, um, to talk about so we can get them information, but also maybe get some feedback to find out what we're missing. How how do we, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Excuse me. Yeah, please. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to say, I hope Mr. Lipper understands how important you are. You, I, the town looks at you as a group that's a mayoral group, that sets precedent, that helps lead the way. Um, I've heard this. Um, part of this circle thing, and part of finding some of the information, starts with <coughs> the Within you all doing that, you know, you did that Perry. Now talking with us, because that's where we're going to get the first initial ideas. Because you also are the town. You also <coughs> you also are individuals in the town. So we have to start somewhere. And the best place to start is with you all. Because your ideas, what you think when you read this book, Blue White Eyes, Color and Racism in Vermont, what do you get out of that? Then we get ideas, then we get more information to put. Because we are talking, they are talking about putting together a survey. But then we're, there's more questions that's going to come from you for that survey. You know, not just us, just from you from that survey as well. Um, so I just want to say that you, I, I, I hope you under really fully grasp how much you're looked forward to to lead this to help lead the equity and inclusion. It's not just from sitting back here and us doing it. It's also the town looks to you. If you speak up about this, and if you are active in this, more people will become active in this. They, okay. will, def they will definitely want to take a part. Because um, they look to you. They look to you to govern this town. I know what you just stated, your, what, what you actually do, but the perception of who you all are as a board to the town's people, you're like the mayor of this town. You're the governance of this town. Not just financially, but somewhat morally and somewhat ethically. So I just hope you understand how much we look towards you for that. It's so I, I have a question, just because I don't. So if, and, I, and if I misunderstood this, please tell me. What I, so the conversation, the circle conversation. Um, if those conversations are private and just between the two people that are having them, then I'm not sure how that furthers your goal. But what I think might further your goal is what if there's a community read 
versus just the select board because, or, or you know, just the board. That those conversations I'm sorry, you have to pull your fist. Oh, it's just it's you. my understanding that those conversations are the first seat. And from those conversations, there is a bigger discussion amongst those groups and the committee. Mm -hmm. And that is taken to further out. So it keeps bouncing out. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stay insular. It doesn't stay just between the two of us. So those thoughts and ideas that you had or those things that you were questioning to each other, you now have to bring to the committee and the people in the committee to talk to to further sort of peel back the layers of what you were thinking, what we're thinking, where we meet, where people stand, where different people are. Um, do, do, you, do you understand what I'm getting at? Okay, yeah, because that's not yeah. the way, I, I mean, obviously we don't have a big, it wasn't spelled out anywhere, right. what the circle was, right. and I just understood it to be um, a personal thing, kind of where you could have an open discussion and admit your, in my, I'm gonna say, in my ignorance, without feeling embarrassed or someone labeling me in a way that is unfair right. because, so maybe what I feel comfortable saying to Lindley, I may not be comfortable repeating that to somebody else. But that, I think that's the point. The point is that you were comfortable saying with Lindley, now you bring, the two of you come to the committee mm -hmm. and we get you comfortable saying it there. And then you bring other groups, you bring more people into that. And more people are comfortable really being truthful and talking and having a civil discourse, mm -hmm. a truly civil discourse about these businesses. Mm -hmm. And so it grows. And, it grows. and I think, you know, this town is 2,000 people. I think if we can reach 2,000 people, that's a lofty but wonderful goal. I really do. Yeah. Um, I think it's important. Yeah. And the idea is, like Brian said, it's cumulative. So if we, it's been a huge win, I think, that we've even been having these conversations here, right? We've discussed race, we've had, you know, last time we talked about this, David Fair shared an experience that he had being pulled over in Randolph, and, and, and we really sort of concretely discussed that this is happening here. Um, he also raised the issue of, um, you know, homophobia, transphobia in our community, and these are just, the power is in the conversation, right? The power is in the fact that we're talking about it, we're asking questions, and the goal is not that we all necessarily come to some unified place where we all think the same thing, but that we're practicing talking about these issues out loud. And so I'm definitely hearing that it's something we should be doing community-wide, right? And I think the thought was that we've, we've heard from you that, that some folks in the select board feel like they need more support in understanding what the issues are before they can talk about and so we kind of thought, okay, we can support conversations between you, conversations um, with the equity inclusion committee and you, and then we can have these big community-wide conversations, right? So it's it's like stepping stones. Um, and you know, if uh, the other cool thing about the circle process is that it's something that's used in our school system, and I don't know if Lindley can speak to this, but it's a process that is really rooted in sort of making sure that everybody has a seat everybody feels like there's not one expert, there's not a teacher who's coming in saying, this is what we should think. But instead, it's people saying, you know, I have a question about this, or I read this in the news, I don't know how I feel about it, and that type of vulnerability is expected of everybody. So the equity inclusion committee would be asking the same questions and, and sharing vulnerable things with you, Therese, right? So it goes both ways. Um, and that's sort of the idea of circle. Yeah, so sort of to respond to both of those, um, because I, I am a believer in the circle process and an active participant in it through the school, but also through other community endeavors. Um, it can be a really great process, and I think that some of it might be there's just just learning what that process looks and feels like, right? Anything new is, is scary and easy to just say, nah, never mind, I'm good. Um, so I think to sort of address what Lenny started with, is we are very forward-facing members of the community. So to be the first to take that step, while it is a big deal, it's also sort of this big, scary, like, mm -hmm. what if I'm in that circle and I say the wrong thing, and now I'm also still this public figure. So I think there's, there's mm -hmm. the, the sort of push-pull of that hesitancy that, yeah. yes, we're in that role, but also mm -hmm. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of, well, we're forward-facing, and it's, mm -hmm. it's scary to take that first step into it, um, I would sort of even pair that with 
um, as much as I'm a believer of the circle process, I've also had some experiences when I've been paired with somebody who I'm not comfortable with, mm -hmm. it actually, you don't open up. Mm -hmm. And so then the, the process sort of falls apart if not well led, if not well orchestrated, if you, like let's say Lenny and I had a fight out back mm -hmm. an hour ago and now we're sitting in a circle process, I might not be ready to right. enter a confidential situation with him. You know, we, we've just sort of duked it out, out back and I'm mm -hmm. kind of sitting here going, I don't want to tell him my deepest, darkest fears or, or open up. So I think there's a little bit of the, the hesitancy that's sort of being experienced tonight is, mm -hmm. is that. It's that we are forward facing and it's a new unknown process to a lot of members. and. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, not that that offers any solution. Though. <laughs> no, but it's interesting because I had never heard of the process. And then when Lindley and I met, um, we, you know, obviously we talked about the article and, and you know, and any questions or whatever it brought up for us and any of the readings. And, you know, of course, Lindley's taking the other class, so it was very helpful. But um, so for me, she also helped explain it, you know, a little bit. But we hadn't gotten, hadn't delved into it to what it looks like and how it is. and and. Um, because, you know, while I was talking to her, or, or talking to my, you know, my oldest daughter, it's like when we were on vacation, I'm like, all right, here's some stuff I just don't, whatever, get, or I read this and I'm confused. And so she was giving me her opinion. Obviously, it's very safe because even though I can't ground her anymore, she's probably not going to, you know, God, my mother is such an idiot, you know, she's already said that. I already know that, you know, so she's, she's stuck it was with a you. very comfortable space for her to say, you know, this is, so, and I, and I was able to be comfortable in it, so I wonder if you're not, you know, have that, how, how valuable the process. So that's why I kind of wonder if, if the process is bigger, so it's more of a community ride, read, and then you're kind of encouraging community members to speak with other, not necessarily, you know, with other different community members, or you're trying to set up this thing you know, this participation, because that's one of the things he talks about in that book is that he participated in this circle mm -hmm. um, in Burlington and how it worked and what he took from it and this and that. Mm -hmm. um, so and, and it, it's just a, it's a hard thing to, to figure out and what's going to make everybody comfortable. It's going to make me comfortable isn't necessarily the same as somebody else, right? So, right. I, but I appreciate your explanation about the circle process because that I did not know. Yeah. And if I may, a couple of things. Sure, picking up on what I heard Lenny say. I think there is a there is another role for the select board and that is to provide leadership to the community over some of what controversial issues. And that means understanding those issues as deeply as we can on a personally but a public uh, level. The second is I wonder what the people in Bennington might have thought if they would have been aware that <coughs> some of their employees were acting in a racist way toward then senator to the state who uh, filed suit against the town that intended they paid $134,000 because the community leaders were not aware of what constituted uh, racial harassment. Mm -hmm. and, and this kind of conversation might uh, sensitize us <laughs> to the kind of things that might be happening that we're simply blind to because we haven't to it and may in fact be uh, something that then puts us in a position of saying as leaders in the community, this is something that we as a community really, really need to become involved in. Uh, the circle process, as I understand it, well, first of all, let me say that if I understand correctly or remember one of the reasons for limiting the conversations here to two of us with somebody else yeah. was because of open meeting law. Mm -hmm. And that if three of us gather, it now becomes incumbent upon us to warn the meeting. Uh, and if there is a way for us to not be engaged in the town business, but to engage in this conversation. I mean, I, 
and I think to piggyback on that, and and I believe what Lenny had said and Owen had said as well is, I mean, I, I, I think we all agree that, you know, the select board as well as the town manager are, are usually your face of the community. Um, uh, and, but we have to be careful too because we want to make sure that, you know, like our committees are designed for the people, right? So we have to be very careful, like we want to lead by example and be a part of the process, but we don't want to dictate the process, you know what I mean? So we have to be very careful that, and, and we've seen it here in the past with other administrations that, you know, that steered the ship in their own way, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we have to be careful, and I, I did like, uh, I mean, it's been said a couple times, I think there's a way that we can do it where, where we do it as a community, you know, as a community, but have the select board involved in that community process mm -hmm. as more of, not so much leaders, but supporters, mm -hmm. you know? Because we have to be careful, because if we start, if the select board starts, saying, all right, you know, all right, Ellie, we want you to build a basketball court this year, right? And your whole committee has just spent your whole time saying, geez, you know, we're really getting a lot of use out of the skate park and we want, well, we're thinking phase two of the skate park, right? So I think we have to be careful because we, we delegate, you know, at, um, to the committees and we select you know, the delegates based upon, you know, how we feel you will represent the town in that. And I think we have to be careful that we, if we project too much, we can steer people in a way that they may not want to go, right? So I think, you know, I kind of like the, I kind of like the committee, uh, the community involvement piece where we can bring more people into the picture, but also have the select board be a part of that conversation, right? I think you also have to allow each individual, just like the select board and the community, to, to, to kind of make their own journey in this process. But at the end of the day, you know, I would like to see, you know, just like any of our commi committees, is then the committee comes to the select board and says, hey, through all of our community involvement, including, you know, you folks, you know, here is what we're seeing, feeling, being told, uh, you know, and, and this is what we think the next piece might be. Just like the rep committee will say, we think the next piece to ours is we really want to move forward with the skate park number two. And then that starts that conversation of something concrete that we can talk about, right? So that might be, okay, well, how do we fundraise? How do we, you know, how do we do this next piece? Do we do something in the budget? Do we, you know, just like, you know, Nellie's been down this a billion times. But you know what, it's also sometimes that, because we want you to be successful too, that sometimes we're gonna reach out to you, just like Ellie, correct me if I'm wrong, Ellie. Once in a while we might reach out to you to say, hey, come have a talk with us. Yeah. You know, what are you guys up to? You know, let's make sure you're on the right, you know, we wanna go forward and have that path. And we've said it to Ellie before. Ellie, when are we gonna get this skateboard park done, right? We've been sitting on this thing for four years. You know, so I think there's, that piece too, where we're gonna reach out to your committee and say, where are we at? You know, what do you need from us? And you might say, hey, we really wanna do this thing that's gonna cost $300. Can we earmark that budget, you know? And then we're like, you know, then we talk about the budget session and we get that through, you know what I mean? So. Thomas, you guys can leave those down. I'm gonna have another meeting in here tomorrow night. Okay. You're okay, that's fine. I'll wait down later, but thank you. Thank you. 
about how we hold each other accountable. So what I'm hearing is um, we can do those as a larger community um, invitation and then also invite select people um, to be a part of those conversations if you choose to. Um, and, and also kind of invite the select board to be supportive of those conversations happening, if nothing else, right? So like, yes, we're glad that there's conversations happening about these issues. We're not dictating what people need to think about, but we think that the idea that the conversations are happening is a good thing. And then at the same time, the um, Equity and Inclusion Committee can take the lead on this bigger project, which is going to be a big project, of mm -hmm. the survey. <laughs> yeah. Um, which maybe community conversations is a part of how we collect that data, right? Um, it might not just be handing somebody a form, but having asking questions and things like that. So that's kind of what I'm hearing, as opposed yeah. to the individual One, and well, not, not to interrupt you because I am, yeah. but um, <laughs> is one 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 really cool thing that that was that took place in the downtown when we were doing a lot of um, uh, we'll call it brain sessions for projects in the past, and they used to bring it to like um, Bethel University stuff. Is they always had a, 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 the big blackboard, which was kind of cool. And anytime they had something going on, they put the blackboard, like, say you were having a beer, they put it in the corner over there. And then people were free, and, and you could have a topic, right? Mm -hmm. So to get some information back from the community. Mm -hmm. Instead of passing out a survey, you could have a question, right? Mm -hmm. it could be one question. And then people are free to go up and write on the board a word. Or, you remember that? Oh, yeah, we do and, it all the time. And then over the course, you might get, like, you know, say 40 people come, you might get 10 people yeah. to write the same word. Mm -hmm. Or circle the word, or, you know, or write a new word. When we were doing the fish. Yeah, yeah. the fish, yep. When we were doing the banner. Yep. Yeah. We so that, I mean, so then you could have like a community yeah. Yeah. involvement discussion. Yeah. Right. You could maybe write a question. Yeah. And then as the members, or as the community comes in, you, you, you know, you can announce it, you know, during it, you know, feel free to go up in, at, you know, at your own time and, you know, put a word or two on the board. And then at the end, you can kind of collect that because that used to be downtown, yeah. you know, and, or in some cases, they put it out in front of our block and stuff like that where people may be walking downtown and they see the question. Granted, sometimes you get people that do things they shouldn't do, but at least people can be part of that discussion without necessarily, you know, like some people are shy, some people may not want to, you know, some things might be a little more private to people, but it gives them their own opportunity to, to give you feedback without actually like being on the spot. Well, the so. other thing too is, you know, we have this big whiteboard. We, for a while, we'll be holding meetings here, you know, well, we will continue to hold here, but like I have a planning commission, DRB, as you know, one tomorrow night here at seven. And so maybe it's something you put in the corner the BRTS boards, which is two towns, you know, our combination of two are meeting here Wednesday night. So even if it's something in the corner of the hall that you leave up, but the, if you were to do these larger circle conversations, it sounds like you received a grant through BAPES, but certainly the town, you know, we can partner with you to say, okay, we can obviously do Facebook, from Fort Toronto, we can help you advertise it, we could, you could use the hall for free, you could, there's ways to help, and when, if you're gonna do either a community read or just an excerpt or however it is you, you choose to do that, I, I don't know, but certainly could help you through, you know, do what we can to partner with you, as to partner with you to help you say, okay, you want these open to the public, and, and you know, at first maybe three people show up, but maybe as those three people tell someone, it kind of, you know, garners a little, a little steam or something, you know, so that you can, um, and as they get better publicized or things like that. And there might and be opportunities. There might be opportunities to work with identities that already have, you know, things that go on. Like, you know, we'll have the concert on the green ser series pretty soon. You know, maybe you could have a, you know, a piece of information they have a question that people could come at their own time and, you know, write, write some information on it or, you know, we have fall festival, you know, we have different, yeah, different, different formal events that are already set that you could partner with. And it, it, it seems to me that the, the Equity Inclusion Committee has come to us with the proposal that we engage um, and that we Fine, 
and say, some things are good, folks. Some things are not. And then invite the community to come along. Well, I mean, I, I would have to say, you know, in regards to that, you know, that that we already are doing that, you know? I mean, this this select board has been nothing but positive and forward thinking through this whole process since 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 the opportunity that, you know, Jesse and Owen and others had come to us about starting a, you know, starting a committee, you know, and, and, and going down that path. And, and, that's and I think what you're hearing from the select board, at least myself, and it sounded like the conversation is, is that we would like to, we'd like to broaden the discussion um, to not just the select board members, but to include the community into these discussions. And, I think and for us to be a supportive role in that discussion, rather than like almost dictating a response to it. You know, like let's be supportive, let's get behind the discussion, let's be part of the discussion. But we're, you know, not necessarily be <coughs> like Dave and I, or Teresa and I, or Lindley and I, or you know, uh, discussion piece of it. I think that's what I heard tonight. Um, and I heard the equity and inclusion committee state clearly that this was a first step. This was not a be all and the end all. That, um, that those kind of broader conversations needed to happen. But I also heard I don't, I guess I, you've lost me, Gene. I, Why I don't know how you tie the flag on South Main Street into this. I, I, I don't want to go down this road. No, it's, because, it's, it's the road, it's the... Because all I'm going to say about that flag down there, and I don't agree with it either, but you know what? When there were similar sayings that were sitting in Richardson's store for months, nobody in this community gave two shits about it. And now that somebody is fl flying a flag that is of the opposite party, let's call it, now it's a big deal, right? And we, we had an individual in this community that came to the town office and to summarize it said, what are we gonna do about this flag, right? I think it's offensive. It's not something I would put up in my house, but you know what? What I think is offensive doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means it's someone else's opinion, right? And this individual came to the town and said, what are we gonna do about this flag? Well, one, it's on private property. We can't do anything about that flag, okay? Two, when, when this individual, who is kind of higher up in the community, was told, well, what about the stuff that went on at Richardson's store for months on end? And this individual, to summarize it, says, well, that was different, right? 
It's not different. All it is is your opinion might be different from these people's opinion on South Main Street. But that's not the select board. We, we cannot control what somebody wants to do on the private property. There's a difference between public property and private property. They're separate. We don't govern that at all. I mean, if they, if they put up a flag that said they want to physically harm Gene, then we can step in. We could do the proper change. But to do that, there, there's nothing that this board can do anything about that. And I don't even know how we're even tying that into to this discussion right now, because it's not the same discussion. Can I, can I bring it back to um, something that Owen had said? And it sort of actually, I think, bridges a little bit of um, what Gene was saying and, and Chris was saying earlier. Um, you have to just give me a second, because I have to collect my thoughts. We went on a, a different train, and I have to get back to my original train. Um, which was, so I wonder if there's sort of a middle ground from what the last thing that Owen said. And so I'm gonna try to summarize it to get myself back there, which was like hearing what the board was talking about of, of broadening the conversations. And the thought that occurred to me was, yes, that's, you're, you're acknowledging, yes, that's the goal. And we're acknowledging, yes, that's the goal. And we back that. And I think there's sort of this middle piece. And it was, it was Lenny who kind of started it and you commented on it later of, it's about the process of the conversations, which actually I think is exactly like this has been a success in that you tasked us to have one-on-one -on -one conversations and we actually all kind of, not all, but we sure. went and had additional conversations and we reached out to other members and like in Teresa and my conversation, which by the way, it was four hours long and it was fantastic. <laughs> like, I don't even think either of us noticed how long it was until it was like, oh shit, it's <laughs> um, But But one of the things that we talked about sort of just for the, for the two of us was that we wanted to continue our specific unit of a conversation, even if we go and do other pairings with, the, with other members, right? We wanted to continue ours, and she specifically said, do you think next time we could invite Lily into this conversation? Because she might bring some things that, you know, the two of us were kind of puzzling over that I think she'd have some, some interesting thoughts on, right? So we were already doing exactly kind of what you're hoping to see, and I think where Jean was going was Jean was, you know, expressing feeling like there's, there's sort of a stop being put on that. And I, I don't necessarily agree that there's a stop being put on that. I think that actually, in fact, we've, we've all sort of gotten that bug now and we're gonna start having those conversations. So my, my thought, and this is sort of the question to individual members of the board is, would that next conversation, would you feel more comfortable if you picked who you're paired with from the select board or Therese or or equity and inclusion committee member plus another person. So make it a group of three with only one other select board member so we're not breaking any laws, but have some choice in that. And so then, you know, Gene and I could say, yeah, we'd love to meet and Owen, would you join us, right? And, and I think some of the hesitancy is like, who am I gonna be paired with? Am I gonna be, you know, and instead of navigating that, cut that piece out and give some autonomy to the group selection. So I think I'm, I'm sort of posing that question to board members like, I think we're naturally doing exactly what I think equity right. inclusion is asking. You're right because now I asked you about that, then Chris and I had a conversation. Chris talked to a coworker. I talked to you. I talked to Dory. I talked to Chris. Chris talked to a coworker. He told me what I his talked to other community and members. His, yeah, and his you know. coworker was telling me what. So I, asked I think the discussions happen. And just, then I talked to an employee the other day right. about it and said, "Hey, how do you feel?" You know, so. The conversations are happening because of this information and this, and, and basically you giving us that was like, okay. Cool. So then it got me thinking, okay, well I have a, you know, how does this work? And then Chris was like, oh, I spoke to this person at work and I said, well, can you tell me what they said? Because I'm curious how that fits in with our conversation. So even though you've only, you know, charged us for lack of it to work with just, you know, each other, we've already had you know, more conversations, which is, you probably should have said that out of the gate, you know, so I, I, I didn't think to say that. So I think it's kind of been this great catalyst. Yeah. But I think like what Lindley had said before, is in order to keep this moving productively, that, that you know, like myself, to be as productive as possible is I have to be 
as comfortable as possible with my partner, right? To get the most out of it. Like Linda was saying, if you just, you know, if you get partnered with somebody that really you ha either had a bad experience with or, or something at that time, you may not get as much out of your conversation. And, you know, I found, you know, starting, you know, starting off with um, Paul and then, you know, and then it quickly, I, you know, I wanted to get, because I like to get feedback. So then I wanted to get more feedback from other people. So, you know, I'd ask people if they minded or, you know, Teresa and I talked and a coworker of mine uh, who's from Jamaica, you know, it's getting like many different you know, feelings from different sides of it, not just Bethel, but, you know, I'll talk to my mom, you know, I mean, like, you know, those things. And they, they don't live with you, but, you know, you get different things. I talk to my daughter about it, you know. Yeah, She's currently husband. going through the, the middle school piece of it. So you're getting different information. I'm just afraid of and is like, okay, you're partnered with so-and-so. And we want you to partner, okay, it's going to be you and Lindley and one committee member, you know. Because I don't know if I'm going to sit there and be as constructive and have that conversation. Because, you know, not that people are bad, I just... I just don't know you or I'm not ready to open up. Like, I feel safe with that conversation where I, I really like a community setting. I like having information and I like to be able to interact with other people than just board, right? And then I like to take that information and share it with people that I feel conversation goes well with. And that could be friends, family, other community members, you know, Coworkers, whatever you know, and that's what I really like about it. But I think if personally, if you told me I had to sit down with a certain individual or two or three, I don't know. I don't know what I bring to the table. Yeah, Chris, you know? I just jump in for a quick second. I'm really um, learning. Uh, I mean, I like to learn. I'm a sponge. I like to learn new things. I'm a fixer. I, when things are broken, I, that's what I do. And I, this has really sparked a lot of interest for me. Because I'm, I'm not from here, you know, I grew up 40 years in a big city, so I have all different experiences with all sorts of different ethnic backgrounds and religions, and, and I've always operated a certain way with people. And I think you guys can attest to that because we've had some conversations, and when you first came to town, you know, we, uh, Linda and I were one of the first ones to put our hands out. And so. You know, I have those standards that I live by and I treat people a certain way. And this has caused me to think about some other things that I hadn't really thought about before. But it also brings me back to the purpose of the Equity and Inclusion Committee it seems to be focusing on one certain area, one topic. And Lenny, you know, Lenny said it before, let's say the hard words. Focusing on racism. When there are so many other aspects of equity and inclusion, you know, the, uh, the, the, the plight of the Asian Americans right now, um, the foreign uh, folks from Sudan that are moving into Vermont and, and the struggles that they're going through. And I think the committee is maybe getting focused in on one part where there needs to be a, also a bigger conversation about these other things that, like Chris mentioned, the community activity would help to bring out some of these other things. Mm -hmm. And I think people are uncomfortable talking about racism. And, and because I know the way I, I live my life, and I'm cautious about somebody telling me, no, you need to do this. Or, and if I don't agree with you, then you're some kind of an IST word. Um, and so the, I would be, would be very comfortable talking to, to you guys or, or whatnot, but have it as a select board function. I'm uncomfortable with that because we, we are the leaders of the community, but I think we also have our boundaries of what we can actually do and what we can't do. And we can, we can do both. We can show by example and conversations, but not necessarily do it as, in a meeting format like here as a, as a select board member. Like we, you can do both. So that's, yeah. that's my opinion for it. And, and, that, and again, it's that's worth. exactly what I was saying with, you know, the select board being a part of the bigger discussion on a public platform, not a meeting like this, but, you know, a time, date, 
uh, you know, community involvement. And then there can be the other parts where as information is coming out and things are starting to get more concrete, then we have these, you know, just like we do with, you know, Ellie's committee and others, is then we can, can actually start putting things down on paper, right? Like the constructive things, what do we need, what do we, you know, how, how do we do the power of the select board, right, at that point? Um, you know, and I, I mean, I think it's, you know, I, again, we're all gonna, you know, we're all entering this journey a little different, you know, we come from different backgrounds, we see things a little different. Um, I, I think personally, I get way more out of a, in a community event where I can pick and choose who I talk to um, or learn from, you know, right? It's all about learning. And, and you know, sometimes if I'm like, okay, you have to be paired with this one person, I'm like, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I've been like this in school, you know. I just, well, I think it's a comfort level, right? Like, I mean, if you're not. So and so, you know. <laughs> person so, never does their homework, you know. So, <laughs> so Paul, just to make sure I got this right for the minutes, not that I'm going to quote you verbatim because I'm not, but I just want to make sure I have the sense of it that you're saying uncomfortable having a select word only. Basically, you're you're think you're wanting to kind of continue as a person, not as labeled as a board member. Is right. that if I kind of? Right, yeah. I just want to make sure I got yeah. the right context of your. Yeah, because that's what it boils down to in the yeah, end. We're all people. I mean, next year, or, well, I've got two more years, but. <laughs> <laughs> you see how exciting he was? But, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> but things change. You can make it four. Things just change. <laughs> you know, uh, next, somebody else could not be here. And, and right. things change. And to put that onto a select board member coming in who may not have the same kind of right. background or feelings about it, I, you know, I, I just don't want to get into that. Uh, um, you know, that, that, I don't know what the word is I'm trying to come up. Well, so, I, I just want to say thank you to all of you. I guess on behalf of the committee, I don't know if you have any interest here in the members. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because I do think that really the goal was conversation. Um, and it sounds like you all are having conversations in your lives and um, that some of the material that we've given you has been useful for that. And I think we're a new committee, right? So like, it's really helpful to hear Maybe we should be talking about more things, and that, and that is something that's come up in the committee as well. That mm -hmm. we're, um, you know, the committee was kind of birthed out of a lot of what happened last summer around conversations around racism, um, mm -hmm. and and that's not our charge is to only talk about that. So I hear you, and I think that's really important feedback. And I think we're really just trying to figure out how can we be the most supportive to you all in these conversations around equity and inclusion as we're also figuring out. What are, what are we, what should we prioritize? What should the, um, you know, what should our first big steps be? And so um, I really thank you, Jean, because that is what we were proposing. And we also want, we want to meet you where you're at. That's, that's the goal. Um, and we also don't want to position ourselves as experts in anything because we're all different people as well in this committee, very different people. <laughs> Well, we, you know, we appreciate the ongoing, you know, conversation with, with the committee, um, and you know, as we do all of our committees, and um, you know, and, and, and again, you know, 
you know, we obviously are, you know, the face of the town, but we, but we also want to be there as a supporting mechanism for, you know, for the committee. Um, and, you know, at least in my opinion, anyways, is not try to interject my thoughts exactly, but to support the community's thoughts on this, on this project. And, uh, and then whatever we can do to support that, you know, in our account, you know, which, you know, which is not as uh, wide range as some people think it is, you know, so it's, you know, you know, money or, you know, policies or procedures and, you know, and how do we, how do we do that? And so I look forward to, uh, you know, our next discussion, wherever that may be. And um, I think too, if you have other information, like when you get the definition of different things, anything that you come across that you could certainly provide to me and I can know, put it in the packet. And it does sound like the select board is willing to continue to have these conversations amongst themselves or with other people in their circle, which is kind of what you want, right? Because it's, you want these conversations to, and the one thing I can attest to is that this select board, they're all different and they don't all run in the same circles. So that if Paul's talking to someone, it may not be the same person that Chris Jarvis is talking to or Lindley. So if we're having these ongoing conversations, um, the circle's bigger than the circle is bigger. Yeah, and I mean, I was having this conversation, you know, about one of the readings. Um, I mean, actually, a, an excerpt of that book, which I thought was there was a couple in particular that I kind of gone back to highlight and like, oh, that right there is just in itself. This one thing is just such a great talking point, mm -hmm. and um, you know, talking to employees and also. BLCT is, as I sent you the information, Owen is starting to do this too. So I actually think, or what I'm hoping to see, and, I, and I'm going to reach out to BLCT, is when they start to develop their committee and their information, they will do trainings, which would be great, and that would be nice for not only for myself, but employees as well, to because that's the great thing about BLCT is they're going to take this information, like they do select board trainings, and, and they will, you know, once they sort of all there's a lot of information I wrote to them when I after I talked to you and Christy and Jerry and, and they were like oh that's great you guys are starting this committee because there's not a ton of these committees in Vermont right now and I did say you know as you get information we you know we want to be a part of it and they will do training so it'll be nice to have employees go and maybe even there's going to be some stuff so I will reach out to them tomorrow or, or this week at least and say hey how are you coming along over there because did, are they going to develop they do develop a lot of model language, model policy. Are they going to be developing a survey or some other stuff that we, I could get to you or that we could all look at too? Mm -hmm. um, so it, it might be, you know, they, you know, it's, we obviously every town pays them some dues and, and they get um, money for grants and different things. So maybe there'll be something there too. Um, we hope to generate some of our own materials. Like yeah. this is you coming us to be able to have this back and forth about <laughs> how are we going to do this how does this work how do we you know and and you're open and, and helpful in facilitating that so i feel that makes me happy that we can sit here and have this great conversation without anyone yeah. nobody's mad nobody's crying you know <laughs> that's great i really like that so thank you for that all right uh, we have your score Um, 
or it might be good. I mean, you guys are establishing a oh, your website. website. You know, it might be a good yeah. opportunity to link, yeah. Yeah, link you that to your website resources. on some, you know, yeah. Yeah. reading material. Yeah. 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 The other thing too, you know, on I wonder is um, because you can do, um, you know, that book and the other one you recommended. So you'd want to talk about race, which was great. I wonder if you reach out to Kathy Day yeah. because yeah. I'm not a member of the Bethel Library, but I'm a yeah. Bethel of Member of the Brookfield. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm also a member of the Brookfield Public Library, and if you join the library, you can get audio books. Yeah. And I wonder if she does that through there, because then that would be great for you guys to put a link on your website, because Thomas sent me the thing to the yeah. Bethel Library to say, hey, this book is available or on a waiting list, or you can yeah. get it through audio books, or, um, you know, I mean, everybody, you know, a lot of those There's audio so books. So many ways to get things. Yeah, so. but um, certainly. Um, yeah. You know, and then, who well, no, knows? You know, the other thing too, I thought about it, or you guys probably too, is that we, we had a, you know, a shared resource, right? So I think some people, if they purchase the book, may be later willing to donate the book yeah. um, to have maybe even at the library, so she has multiple copies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're actually in conversation with Kathy about she reached out with recommendations from our committee mm -hmm. for new books. And maybe, oh, nice. maybe, I mean, we used to have, I don't know how active it is anymore, but we used to have the book swap um, mm. locations in town, too, that, you know, that might be a positive way to get. There are, there are folks that monitor the different little libraries. Yeah, the so that might be a good uh, opportunity to, to share feel like information. I think they're yeah. partnered with the library. I think they're partnered. Oh, I like yeah, I think that, I think Kathy and Lisa work with them, and then you know, give certain people certain books, and they go fill the library. Yeah, like one out in Louisville. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're all over. Yeah, mm -hmm. always be good. Well, we appreciate your time this evening. And yeah. We'll let you get home before we start. We're going back to the bar. We got to open that thing. Yeah, <laughs> 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 we'll make some money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a good evening. Thank right. you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. We had our public comment piece, um, so if there's anything that um, wasn't on the agenda this evening that anybody want to bring up now is the time. Huge audience. I would like to clarification. I was not here when Richardson's store was open or had been. Uh, but if opposite. Right, but it, and I think that's any member of our staff were to use, they could be brought up on charges of sexual harassment and create an offensive environment. I don't think it is an opinion to say that the use of that word is contrary to the say that, that doesn't mean we're taking sides, we're opposing political speech, freedom of speech, we're simply saying it is offensive and not appropriate in public. I mean, I, I think we all can agree with that, Gene. Well, and, 
I mean, Facebook is public too, right? So, I mean, it's... No, Facebook is not public. Very public. It's not public in the same sense. I have to choose to go to pub or Facebook. I don't see it when I drive down, see Facebook when I drive down the road. Whether it's in Richardson's store or hanging out a person's... Right, but I, I think I think we all can agree. But I don't think there's anybody on this on on this board that's going to agree that they agree with you know the terms that are on the flag. I think what we all can agree with is that the privilege of the select board does not govern private property. And and what and, and I agree a hundred percent with that. But but all I'm saying is there there is nothing that any of us on the select board can do about that flag. Nothing. Not not. Not anything. There's no ordinances in place. There's nothing that we can do um, to do that. And you know, and, and again, you know, the terms. But you know, how it offends one person may not offend the other person the same, or somebody might take it completely different. But you know, we've had so many calls to the town about what are you going to do about the flag. Well, there's nothing we can do about the flag. It's a you're, you're Unfortunately, right. it, even though we don't agree with it, it's a First Amendment right of that individual and the owner of that building. I mean, there's, there's nothing we can do about that. You know, I think Teresa's done her homework and she's checked around with law enforcement to see if it, you're absolutely, you know. I'm not arguing that there is something we can do to force or make the person take the flag down. That's not how. But that doesn't mean we can't say as a select board. I know, but what, what's actually happening, Gene, is you're talking about it right now, right? So you're talking about it. What is this actually doing in some ways? It's actually promoting it in some ways, right? I mean, you're looking at it as trying to, to you know, look at it the same way I am, right? It's offensive. But in some ways, by talking about it in a public forum like this, we're actually in some ways incentivizing it, right? That, like there might be many individuals in the community that think that's fine, right? I mean, my thing is we police every single thing that somebody puts up, you know, a flag, a banner, a <coughs> political statement of some sort. I mean, we're, I mean, we're gonna, our heads are gonna be spinning here at this board. Cause you know, unfortunately there's people that like to do just about anything on their property, you know? Um, but I don't know, I mean, what, what, do you, what is it that you think that the board should do about the flag? I mean, I other than not having jurisdiction. I'm not necessarily saying we should do anything about the flag. I think it is appropriate, however, that we say something is offensive when it is offensive, when it does not meet with our policies for web statements, it does not meet with our personnel policies or our personnel should behave. I know it's freedom of speech. I understand. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, it, it falls under that. You know? Yeah, I, just, I mean, I, I can agree with I mean, if this is a, um, if, if it's related to the town, let's say, if it was a, I don't know, if it was one of our personnel that, you know, did it or, you know, there's action we can take as a board, or trees can take as a person, you know, in some ways. But, like, private property, I mean, we would just be chasing this rabbit down the hole for years. I mean, there's so many examples of this. Maybe not a, that exact example, but there are so many common examples of some things like that that do get posted, you know, throughout the community. It, that, but unfortunately, I mean, I don't agree with it, but there's nothing you know, at this point that we can do about it other than talk about it and get nowhere with it. But I just want to clarify, Gene, what you just said a minute, that I read I, this way. Gene agrees there's nothing we can do um, to force them to take it down. He just wants the board to agree it's offensive and inappropriate language. Yeah. Sure, and, and I, I yeah. have sent back that up that it's... Yeah, we've been there. It's, yeah, I think everybody... But, but are we, will, we, will we be... Correct. If we, as a board, agree with that individually, I think we can do it and do it right. Once we, the select board of Bethel, 
Well, we, I don't think we need to make a motion. Oh, yeah. I, I, say, I'm, I think if, I'm not you know, if we, you know, I think we're all on board with Jean. I mean, I, I don't think. Yeah, it's offensive. Yes. I mean, and I spoke mm -hmm. with the landowner today. He came and paid his taxes, and I talked to him about it. And I said, someone thought maybe it was uh, disturbing the peace. So when the constable had another reason to call the state's attorney's office, he asked them about it. And we don't have an ordinance to govern this sort of thing. So the state's attorney said, unfortunately, it's, you know, you can't, you're not doing, you can't touch it, it's free speech. So I didn't talk to the gentleman today about it and just said, look, in my world, would I like this thing to go away? Yes, because I've had at least 12 to 15 contacts, either phone calls, emails, or whatever. Right. So would I like it to go away? Absolutely. And um, and he, he he was like, look, he's like, would I fly in front of my house? No, but I but he supports his tenants' right to 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 display. So that was the way he felt. But I provided him with a copy of the newspaper and said, I don't know if you read the Herald, but here are the letters to the editor, and he, he did not realize it had gone to that level. So I did give him a copy of those today and said, well, well, here it is, and. He's like, look, I feel bad that it's taken your time. I appreciate, you know, mm -hmm. think the relationship I have with the town, and and um, but he stands firm in his belief, and and I hope that people just ignore it, don't look that way, and then something else will come up, and, and maybe eventually, once the shock value wears off, maybe it'll disappear. Um, so I, you know, I have, and I, I called him originally when I the first day I heard about it, and said. You don't live in Bethel, so just in case you don't know. And he was like, no, I do know, but, and again, it was a similar conversation. But we've had, um, we had a very civil conversation about it today, and he knows that I can't do anything about it, but he also, I said, you know, I'd like to see it go away. And um, so, but that's where, you know, so we have had a, you know, conversation. I did give him the, that, so it's kind of where we stand. And, um, so I don't know. sort of the irony, not irony of this is, I've been thinking about this very issue for weeks, seeing that flag and thinking about students of mine reading it. And I think that like one of the only conclusions I can come to is clearly that person is dealing with something that they need a venue to express it and they're doing it very publicly and very aggressively, but actually it's the circle process that would be kind of the way to bring them in and it's probably not necessarily somebody in a place of authority, but somebody who's like-minded to them who could sit them down and say, what, what's going on? Why is this, why does it need to be this way for you? What's happening in your life that's bringing it to this place that you need to put it out there and do something that is frankly offending your neighbors? Mm -hmm. And you maybe know, the and, landlord, and so, you know, Will, we had, he and I had right. a conversation today, yeah. maybe, once, <laughs> yeah, maybe once he reads the letters to the editor and right. he's have a chance to do that and we've had a conversation, maybe and, and I think, and that's kind of a point that I was saying with you, Gene. Is I think, I think people, in a lot of times in these cases, they want to attract the attention, right? You know, the more people talk about it, they're getting their message or whatever out to people. And, you know, it's kind of like the unfortunate issues that happen. You know, let's say a shooting or something, and the more you talk about it, the more you're politicizing it. And, and you know what I mean? Like, so uh, I guess the way I've always dealt with that is, I drive by it, I don't look at it. You know, and, you know, unfortunately, there's nothing, you know, we can do about it, so I just try to work on something more constructive that I can do something about, you know. But, I mean, wouldn't be my first thing that I would put up my house. Um, yeah, and the landlord also, you know, he said that. He said, I wouldn't put I fly in front of my house now. Um, so, hopefully. But, anyway, I just want to make sure I quote you accurately, sir. Uh, but I did want to clarify. Because I was not here, so I did not see any obscenities from, quote, the other side. Yeah. It and was last I, summer. And I also want to be very clear mm. that my objection is not to the political stance of the person. Right, it's the word. It's, it's the mean. particular use of a particular word that I find.
But I need to, to say one thing. You can go and take this so deep down a rabbit hole that you, I don't know, if you'd ever get out of it. But unfortunately, the younger generation uses this word the same way that I did when I was in, up in school, when I said okay. This, this, this word. word, and that this word now is not an offensive word to this majority of this newer generation. Uh, I hear it, I hear it when I go to a, when I go to a uh, place of employment that has uh, men, women, uh, all, that word, if I don't hear it 20 times a day, I, I'd be lying. Right. Unfortunately, it's an unfortunate thing, but that's part of what's happening. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just made it to it's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, any further discussions with any of that? <laughs> Anything else? Public comment? Great. So we had a few things uh, that we had some follow-up stuff in the last couple of meetings. We had the hazard mitigation plan. Um, yeah, so um, anyway, so sorry about that. So yeah, last time I, I apologized and then I'll apologize again. I didn't give, I gave the person Paul hard copy, but it didn't attach the email. So I've sent out the obviously the hazard mitigation plan, and we so know who your favorites are now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now we know. Who <laughs> yeah, Chris has got a smirk. He's like, yeah, that's <laughs> true. You guys. It's not always a good thing, though. Fair. <laughs> 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 yeah. Apparently not. So, anyways, obviously it's a lot of data. It was not, you know, I took the template and and added we added data and the research topics and stuff. So. Luckily, I had uh, we had a contact right with the state of Vermont has a mitigation planner, very nice, Carolyn, and she had reviewed it, and I already incorporated her notes. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those things that you you know that you need to adopt, and we have to do it every X amount of years, and it helps us keep, as I've said before, our ERAF from 25% to 12.5%. Okay. Um, it goes to the I had to send it to neighboring towns. I had two rivers put it in their newsletter. I've had the emergency management committee read it. I've been then tomorrow night. I go over it again with the planning commission. Mm -hmm. So the thing is about the document, there's not a lot of. It's just a lot of data. There's not yeah. really a lot of right. subjective things. And all the events. Right. And it was a part of it was a bear. So um, you know, obviously, if you have any questions or comments. Let me know. Otherwise, there is the certificate of adoption, yep. and you have to pass this resolution adopting the Bethel Vermont 2021 local hazard mitigation plan. Mm -hmm. Is Vermont Township still in Bethel? Yes. Yep. Okay. I well, I think a piece of them did. Part yeah. of it sold, but they're still there. Yeah, okay. but part of the business is still there. No, I know. It's a it's little I, piece, I, yeah. I thought they left and I saw that in there and I, oh, okay. Yeah, no, yeah. they, they still have a little piece there. I think they. They're, they're actually not castings they, anymore, are they? they, they, they Why don't we send them the bill? It, we there. send them the bill as Vermont Hearth and Home, but they yeah. still operate under. Right. You know, I'm not sure how their name changed, but, yeah. but that's good. I can make that. So, what do you need on this? Just a motion to adopt the resolution? Yes. I know we went over it pretty in detail last time, and like Bree said, it's mostly data yeah. from all these different events, and then obviously we'll talk about like a fire station and where we have the equipment and right. you know, and, things and, like that. And, yeah, but we have to adopt it every five years, and, and it had said before, but this time we're actually going to do it. Yes. We're going to look at this thing every year when we do the LEMP. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at this with it, because it makes sense to go Is this the copy you want signed? Um, yeah, yeah. Me. This is one. Um, actually, I think it's this one. I think is there something on the back of that one? Yes, I mean that. I think this. No, it's not page. This one. That's the other one. Yeah, I kind of made a hard copy, but I. Did so it's just one. a two-page. No, this is one. No, this is the social media policy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Like a show game going on over there. Okay, so we just need a motion to adopt the hazard mitigation plan resolution. So moved. 
Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Sign it and pass it that way, and then it can come back again. Well, I still make it Yeah, if you need something, get it. Let me know. Once the planning commission gets it, it's, I look at it. Well, it's going this week to the. Beth, the elementary piece. Is that still week? Well, I guess that's Bethel. No, Bethel elementary is still Bethel elementary. Was that in there, Gene? They must have that right off the bat. The school must have lost out on some funding for that, didn't they? Because didn't the Woodkin name come with Woodkin. Yeah, there's some appropriations or something. They did not. There's something, and I well, actually they didn't lose out on that. No. It, that there's they like had a public done. trust. Was, yeah. Yeah. Was, that was yeah. Carol. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Carol had to move the season. Yeah, and I chatted with Sorry. him a little bit about it, and he. Yeah. He knew Archive. more, but we didn't have a chance to talk more about it. So, yeah, Gene, Bethel School from Whitcomb. So, they still get the appropriations, even though it's not a problem. Oh, Pattern, right no. here. Oh, Pattern, that's why you picked it up. Well, I just. Thank you. That's good. I'm going to ask me to read it. I do. No, and I appreciate that. So, I would make those changes. Pattern, change Vermont Pass, and Vermont Hearts and Home, and Bethel School from Whitcomb to the new well, half the building is that yeah, elementary. Well, well yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd just say like White, White River Valley, Valley School. Supervisor yeah, supervisor. Yeah. It's Rudd is White River Unified District is technically. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what it is. Is White River Unified oh, District yeah. would be yeah. Yeah. with the Bethel yeah. Elementary School and the WRBSF. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. That's good, and I appreciate you picking up This page that you just gave me must be page. Here, Chris, this is the. Oh, that's just a. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, they are playing a shell game over there. Sign! Sign game, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, here. Yeah. Sign right here. Yeah. Yeah. I swear it's a permission slip for a school trip. Yeah, be careful. She doesn't slip a gotcha. check in there for you to sign. Um, Hand it out to Therese. <laughs> and, and then we also have the. Paul and I are here. We also have the. the we also have the social media policy, which we have been talking about for many oh. ones and when we've, uh, you know, we've re-edited it a few different times, so, mm -hmm. and the final version has been edited into what we have now, so we just need a to adopt. So, motion to uh, adopt. So, when do the committees give a copy? Once we approve it. Oh. So. Yep. Uh, who said that? Who made the motion to approve oh. it? Did you make a motion? I did. Okay. Dave made a motion. Second. All right. Second. Thank you, Dave. Mo is proud of you right now. Thank you. <laughs> so he trained that. me well. Aye. Aye. Okay. That one goes this way. And we have an outside consumption permit for Tessie's Tavern. That was in your packet. Okay, yep. And I think I made you know they haven't changed anything. Uh, Right here. Tessie's Tavern is reopening and attached their outside consumption permit. They've not made any changes to the permit that they had prior to this one. I, I went back um, and talked. Uh, Pam has kept several years worth, so they will go back and make sure it all was the same. So they're asking for the same thing they've always asked for. Uh, he's, gonna, he's doing a soft opening. He said he'd publicize it once they reopen. They're going to do a soft opening. They brought some people. I guess at this point, is the board good with is the outside consumption time periods? And I mean, I know there was there was no complaint from last year, right? Yeah. No. Well, or the year before. Year before. No, 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 when they first opened, there was complaints. Yeah, it was right. maybe two years ago. It was like yeah. two or three um, neighbors there on the. Yeah, and what their complaint was was the lighting, lighting. not the, the lighting. Was outside lighting. Okay. And it was a, I went back and read about it, and then. And they okay. did make those changes. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so it was a lighting issue. So, other than that, I mean, they're asking for a, a slightly smaller window than, than the one we had approved here recently. So, so I just need a motion to approve. So move. Okay, move by Gene. Second. Second. Paul, all in favor? 
Give you a discussion. Uh, two quick. Um, what I did was I just gave you a copy of our last uh, meeting mm -hmm. uh, agenda, just to give you an idea of roughly how how it's set up. We meet on a monthly basis. It's been all Zoom since March. Um, I've actually only been to two physical meetings where we were all in the same room. But I, and I just gave you a copy of the names of the folks, just so you could uh, see. There are 32, I think, or 33 towns involved in the, in the um, Regional Planning Commission. The meetings uh, move along very quickly. There is very little room for discussions similar to what we have you know, tonight, for example. Um, the fellow that runs it keeps a very strict uh, uh, schedule. I'll so, hear my staff actually the next one. <laughs> wow. It, for example, uh, the presentation that we have, we always have at least one or two presentations of some kind, yep. usually from staff members that come in, and each staff member is specializing in a certain aspect of the, uh, of the commission. Uh, the one that we had for the COOP uh, presentation, that, that plan is kind of the love child of the hazard mitigation plan and the LEMP. It's just another layer. Yep. But it was put on by Rich Kaglania. Kaglani <laughs> I'm not going to get yeah. it right. He yeah. did the LEMP. He yeah. did. Yeah. He, he if you remember, good. he came in and, and led us through the LEMP yeah. process, yeah. and he could make paint excited, paint drawing <laughs> exciting. You know, it's just his presentation. But he got cut off. The guy, the guy who was leading, really? just said, you know, you need to wrap it up. <laughs> We need to move on to the next one. <laughs> so we always have some kind of presentations. Uh, it's run very well. The Zoom with 33 people has actually worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to continue to have Zoom meetings. They're putting off the uh, annual meeting until later in the year. Um, and if anybody's interested in what goes on with Two Rivers, I can, I can get into it further with you off-site. We're involved in all sorts of strategic planning for the, for the area. They're involved in funding. Uh, Therese works with uh, Rita Cito is kind of our, our link there, and they're involved in all aspects. They're getting a lot of money sent to them on the, uh, for this uh, the, um, CARES Act money that's coming in and also money from the state. They're involved in the legislature. They're, they're involved in Act 250. Permits. They're they're an interested party in all of those. Uh, their their fingers are out into all of the towns. They also uh, approve town plans, which my first meeting there became very controversial because Two Rivers was they're involved in dictating where business uh, areas, enterprise areas, and where your business district can end and begin, and and uh, the folks that at Queechee, where the Queechee uh, Gorge is, that whole business area there, the town wanted to see that expand, and Two Rivers said, no, you can't do that, you better do this and that, so it's very controversial as to whether Two Rivers has the authority to, d to dictate like that, right. and, and also over in Bradford, Bradford wanted to expand further down Route 5, and they put the brakes on it, and come to find out they do by statute, uh, Two Rivers has the authority to, oh. to dictate these, these things. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that. Have yeah, thought and they sat down and they, they negotiated and worked out a deal that was a little better for the towns, but in the end, um, hmm. Two Rivers does has a statutory ability to do I that. Didn't know they, I didn't know they had, I thought they were more of a liaison between the uh, legislature and the towns. You know? Well, that's just one part of it. Because yeah. I reread the statute after Paul told me about it. Huh. I was like, Mr. I would have been. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, they were. The representatives <laughs> and I from. That because when I read, it's interesting yeah. because when I reread the statute, I felt that Bradford's interpretation was correct, that yeah. they were advisory because of the language up mm -hmm. there. But um, I'm glad that they worked it out because. Yeah, they, 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 you know, they came to a compromise, but not what but, Bradford wanted and, what, and not what. It was a White River representative, is where actually Queechee is, is part of that yeah. district. Oh, 
Oh, so it's, a, it's, it's an interesting uh, group of people. Um, so uh, I just wanted to give you kind of an update. Um, Thanks for representing us. And they, we also did the, uh, the um, regional uh, energy right. report yeah. card. <laughs> you cut off. Yeah, okay. You taught him right. too soon. Thanks for that piece of information, Paul. I really appreciate it. All those yeah. in favor, say aye. Yeah. <laughs> but Thank you. they're very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Paul? Uh, yeah. Do I remember correctly that there's been some controversy with two members about a board member or a staff member who may have a conflict of interest regarding a trail use? There there is something going on that the executive uh, committee is speaking about, and, and you know, behind closed doors, mm -hmm. it's being addressed. Uh, I'm not sure about they. They have not given out the details to the commissioners um, because it's a, it's like us discussing a personnel issue. Um, yeah, you can't do that in yeah. in open session. So, but it, there is something brewing. Um, that they alluded to, but they would not, they wouldn't get into details. I got a question, this is a report card thing here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I don't uh, care what the grade is, but when you have a less than stellar grade, are they ready to step forward and say, okay, Beth, your transportation energy you use sucks, but this is what we think we can help you with. Well, when we because just saying you've got a bad problem is not for this place that now has authority. Mm -hmm. That's not, you got to come back with something that says, okay, we can help you. Well, that's what I said, because this is the countywide. Yeah. And remember, we had done the Bethel one a couple meetings ago, and I had reached, you know, and I had kind of said the same thing, was because if you remember, our electric car was down. I'm like, well, we, we as a town can't do anything about that. That's the state issuing it. So, no, they don't offer any financial incentives at this point to help you get there. They're just kind of pointing it out to you. So I did forward it to the um, Energy Committee and, and um, to Nicole and said, you know, hey, and Nicole was great because she got back to me and said, you know, Teresa, there's some other things, people that don't take advantage of, like if there's net metering, like we had talked about that because we as a town participate in a net metering mm -hmm. that's uh, or, uh, outfit for lack of a better phrase. It's not in Bethel. So I said, are we getting credit for that? And she said, no. Because so there were some gaps in the, yeah. in the gathering. But no, they weren't. But they um, must take this. But, but just for a side note, it gets even worse than that. Oh, I can only imagine. But they must, take this, they must yeah. take this report card to the legislature and I hope lobby so. for more money to, yeah. you know, to invest yeah. into the so. report card. I just have this thing so. about, you know, Look down on me and say you're doing horrible, but give me no give me no resources to do resources it. Resources to get back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think too. I mean, you can look at it in the statewide. I wonder there because this is obviously the state's goal mm. to become this. So eventually, they're going to either have to look at a their goals or goals may be unrealistic, or they can just look at these report cards mm. and say, "Wow, you know, we are really falling behind in, in cars," and so mm. they're going to have somebody's got. Of course, you don't know what this report card looks like for others, right? So sure. if we look at it as saying C minus, you know, C minus, right? If but the other the other areas might be a D, you yeah. know, I mean, well, you might be ahead, yeah. you know, but maybe yeah. the goal is so lofty that people aren't there, or, you know, or maybe everybody else is a B plus. And my what my understanding is it's statewide. Yeah. The report card. Part of it is the point that the, the transportation question is not being addressed very well by the state of Vermont, mm -hmm. just statewide, yeah. partly and, because of the rural. Oh region. God, yeah. I mean, that's that's probably the whole thing is how rural it is. And it's not just that; it's the car, the car manufacturers. I have a case in point. I was hired to put in a car charger, a level two car charger for the school district because they have an employee who left their car. Mm. Well, that, that car manufacturer makes a special charger that only works on certain things. Oh, yeah. So the uh, voltage that we all have around here right. in business doesn't work for that car. Yeah. 
You think they would have like some sort of like converter or? We had the guys got them. We had to go to the after market. But the, yeah. I'm, what I'm saying is, these people, you got to do this. Mm -hmm. You got to do that. Well, help me do your part. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, so that but that's part of the. Yeah, that's uh, a question. Very controversial statewide. It's yeah. not really interesting. Yeah. That. Well, the other thing that, like we've seen in the past, is the state so quick to pass down, you know, legislation with no resources. Right. right. We, you need to do this for this a period of time. However, we're not giving you the funding mechanism right. with it. Right. Like you're saying with yeah. Yeah. putting in fire suppression. <laughs> yeah. And then that's what happened with the start of that charger was we started as a looked like it was going to be almost 100% funded. And by the time we got done, it was like, okay, you guys are going to be on the hook for almost everything. <laughs> you know? So then it became this, like, you know, it, it's just amazing how quickly it reversed on itself. You know, money talks a lot of times, especially to small communities like ours. So. Anything left there, Teresa, you have left for us? Just brief. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. so I just want to say thank you. Lisa Campbell has taken your minutes for, I think, yeah. quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So she's resigned from being the board secretary. And so yeah. I just, you know, sent her an email and thanked her for mm -hmm. doing that for her service. It's sometimes a thankless mm -hmm. job. So we I know. figured out. I did, I did secretary duties for the DRB for I don't know how many years. It was the first, my first exposure to municipal government. Yeah. Seven dollars and seven. Yeah, yeah. seven fifty. I got seven. Seven fifty an hour. Is there a motion on that? Yeah. Second. We'll wow. Yeah. Motion and so, a second. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I do both? So I'll be doing. Um, it, so all done for now. Would it be helpful? I'm sure it would be helpful. But uh, I might raise someone else in the community who might be. There might be. We'll we'll tackle it as we go. It kind of was a short. You know, she just. I just found out when. So yeah, well, I was just gonna ask her on office first and, and do it. I, and I, uh, when I was in another town, I was the town clerk. And we did it, so I did it for years mm -hmm. for the select board. And then I became the town minister. I still seem to do it. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then finally, we hired someone to do it. But you're still editing them anyway. So, but yes, yeah, so I'll I'll put something out uh, eventually. But I, I just want to say publicly thank you to her. Mm -hmm. um, so also, I just. <laughs> I gave you this thing about Sand Hill, and I'm telling you, I thought my head was going to explode. So I've, I've written Sand Hill. I got denied my transportation alternatives. I say mine. The transportation alternatives grant. They had $4 million in projects, only $2 million. Then Rita, my friend at Two Rivers, calls me up and says, if you drop everything right now, you can write for Peter Welch for this project. So I did that. I got denied. I was over vacation. Then I got an email from Sanders' office. And I called my contact there, Haley. And I'm like, look, don't yank my chain about this. I've already, I'm not, I've already mm -hmm. written this project. Before. No, Senator Sanders has different, or San, Representative Sanders has separate, separate, bigger parameters mm -hmm. than Welch. And I'm like, OK. So I've written that thing for the third time. So maybe the third time's a charm. I don't know. Maybe. So we'll see about that. Because so it's pending. And I did chat with um, uh, Sandpaper, and the other day I was driving by, he was outside. So I told him my tale of woe that he was not, I was not <laughs> forgetting about him. I'm just trying to find money. Um, just a congratulations to Richard Manning. He's now a level two water operator. Um, he's really been putting the work in and, and he got through one and two, and now he's going to start doing his study toward getting his waste water level one operator license. And he needs to go to at least a two, I think. But, um, so, which is great news, so I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, I saw him on the new mower today. Oh, good. He's, he's such a, I, such a great So I'm calling it. I didn't see him on He is it. just a positive person. Yeah, he's he's nice just guy. such a lovely, lovely staff member. Yeah, um, good neighbor, too. Dietrich, uh, we're going to be opening the pool in July, 
and we are still kind of working on what that's going to look like. Um, Are you making out with like lifeguards? We're not making out well with lifeguards. So it's really, I think what we're going to do is we're going to have challenges that are not COVID related, they're staffing related. There's shortages in the workforce right now severely on everything. Yeah, and as you just said the other night, other uh, towns and pools are calling her like crazy. You have extra lifeguards. No, and the problem is too the Red Cross. They, you know, they there was some certifications that people couldn't get, so we may have lifeguards, but they we may only have one. Currently, we have one person who can teach swimming lessons. WSS. Yeah, so we may end up changing what that mix looks like. Her and I have talked about changing pool hours, extending hours, or closing later. Because remember, you got to keep these. They have to be fresh. You can't stand there and watch that pool for ten hours straight. So we're still trying to see what that looks like, despite the governor, you know, ripping the band-aid off, which is great. You know, we still have our own concerns we're going to look at because if the numbers start to go high with COVID all of a sudden, then the governor put the brakes on. We want to have some sort of a semblance of a plan here. Mm -hmm. um, we're also looking at maybe doing the possibility of doing only two Family Fun Fridays, but in a different way, kind of a different thing, and then kind of waiting for next year to do back to do the bigger thing. So we're looking at it, we'll have more information. We are talking about it, but it's going to be staffing. It's in our minutes, too. Yeah. 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 It's becoming a... Because, because um, she's talking about not doing the, um, the small, small age group. Like right, the, right. And so before we rile up the, yeah, we're kind of waiting to see what it looks like. Yeah, but that's right, exactly. So we'll see. We'll have more information at future board meetings, but yeah. those yeah. were the big things I wanted now, to know. Um, Lisa, I heard a report um, the other day that the, 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 the country is having a problem with the shortage of chlorine. Having our, the DRB or PC, I mean, uh, public hearing until, it's probably going to be July because there's a report, there's a whole process of the has to happen, a report, we have to get the information to other towns, and it's, it's like doing the town plan. We're getting there, and it's a great group. It's a great group. They, you know, it's, it's be fun. I'm, I'm concerned you, we mean public tomorrow. It's going to be a six-hour <laughs> meeting. <laughs> everybody will be so happy to see people. Yeah, it'll be something. So that's it. Those everybody bring a dish in. Oh, you know, don't, <laughs> don't suggest it. <laughs> and, um, so anyways, those are the highlights that I wanted to mention about from the town manager report. And we had the select board meeting minutes from the 19th, as well as we had the joint board with uh, Royalton meeting minutes from the 21st. Just a quick addition to the select board minutes. Um, Owen is not listed as somebody who's present, but he's in the first <laughs> he's referenced. And, okay. and so I was trying to remember, but I couldn't. Was Jesse also on the call? I want to say they were both on the screen. Yeah, yeah, I think they were both. I think they both were, but I couldn't for the, the life of me remember yeah. or yeah, confirm it. So th then it's an addition of both of them. Okay, so I will add. Yeah. Plus um, Owen. Wait, I have the right one. The 19th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this was Kirk White. Okay, so Owen and Jesse. Okay. Plus Owen, plus Jesse. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I'm good with it. All right, so we will add. So the <laughs> And, and those are some of the challenges with Zoom and but stuff. Like somebody can come on and then go off, and you might not right. even get them. Well, and that's like why we signed in from a separate in. thing. Yeah. She's like, I just leave <laughs> yeah. you on your own. That's the challenges with it. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'll make sure we add that. And then, do you think Lisa left because you made too many edits? No. <laughs> <laughs> and anything else in regards to the minutes? I hope not. Yeah. Motion to accept as written or as corrected. So we're using a motion to. We just said that. Motion to accept yeah. as corrected. Paul. Corrected for the 19th? Yeah. yeah. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And motion to approve the minutes for the 21st. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Alrighty. And we had some meeting minutes in the air. Uh, EIC committee had theirs um, in the air. There was a DRB um, piece. We obviously had uh, you know, the joint board uh, meeting.
meeting minutes that were in there and for class groups and the Ford Festival community. Yeah, they're Ooh. teaming up. Yeah, it looks like um, and energy. Mary, Mary Floyd is going to be. Well, that would be good. She's got her newly fun there. Yeah, she does. Yeah. She already checked on it. <laughs> <laughs> She's not she already watched them go into the seat. Yeah, no, yeah. Is it in my bucket yet? Yeah. yeah. I like yeah, it. I see it in there yet. No, please. not until July. All right. Uh, any other business to come before the board? I don't know if it's real business, but uh, just a heads up. Uh, June 28th meeting. July 12th meeting and August 9th meeting. I will not be here. Did you say 9th or 19th? 9th. 9th in August? Okay, Dave's on the road. All right, so feel free while Dave's gone, we can appointed sign him office. up for all sorts of things. <laughs> You're going to be appointed to all being, kinds being, of special being boards. Being assigned and doing. How good for you. We'll come up with something. <laughs> yeah, we'll create committees just for you. That's right. Well, we'll good reward you with all the comp time. <laughs> you can handle it. Yeah. Good for you. Have that issue before? Did we have some issues like that years ago we, with we had, tires uh, and had, stuff uh, in that same area? I'm sure there are other places in town, but that area specifically. But this, yeah. where this yeah. Finley Bridge.